How long do I want to go? What do I want to do there? So just like, yeah, you know what? There's a ticket that's about a, a three week window. And I was just like, eh, what the heck? I'll figure it out later and I just bought it. So guess I'm gonna be in Europe for like three weeks and five days. So better start figuring out what I'm gonna do. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 67 of the Andrew Deitch podcast. It's been a while. I've been super busy this week and a bunch of my shows that I was supposed to do this week fell through. Um, so I thought it would be a great time to do a follow-up episode with my brother because we didn't give, get to cover a big chunk of of his story last time. But before we completely jump into the show, if this is your first time here, welcome. Um, This podcast is all about having stimulating and meaningful conversations (laughs) Um, with the most, you know, fascinating people that I know. And if you're joining me here, that really means a lot because I might not even know you, Might might not even know how we got connected, but you're here. That's the most important thing. Um, I love bringing people together, and I know that there are a million other things you could be potentially listening to right now, so that really means a lot that you uh, decided to check this show out, but um, I can't thank you enough for that. Let's just um, let's just jump into this thing. I don't need to, need to ramble on too much this morning, but um, my guest is my brother, Matthew Deitch, and uh, Matthew's 19 years old, um, and he's a solo world traveler. He's a really smart guy. He has a really powerful story that he actually shared back on episode 51. Um, If you haven't heard that episode, I would definitely go back and listen to that one. Um, He'd never shared his story publicly before, but he got a ton of positive feedback about it. Um, And if you don't want to go back and listen to that episode, that's fine. This is still a standalone podcast. But um, on that episode before, he shared um, how he ended up spending 15 months um, without a smartphone or communication with the outside world. Um, so I would definitely go check that out. But um, on this episode, Matthew shared about his trip that he took this summer. Um, he took a solo journey around Europe that landed him in eight countries in three weeks. And he also did it for way cheaper than you might think. Um, you might be thinking eight countries, that's got to be, you know, 10 grand easy. But it's not. It's really cheap, especially if you're um, living in America. We have this kind of skewed view of how much traveling costs overseas. And uh, as you'll find out, it's not nearly as bad as as, as it might seem. But um, we'll get into his story in just a bit. But I really look up to him. He has wisdom beyond his years. And I think you'll all really enjoy this one. So without any further ado, please welcome my brother, Matthew Dyke. Matthew, we're live. Are we live? Oh, we live, baby. All right, cool. Time to put you on the spot. What's your win of the day since you put me on the spot? Oh, snap, son. My win of the day. Oh, snap. My win of the day is I had a meeting with my friend Matt B. Davis and my friend Kevin, the Kevin Fuller, both of which have been on this podcast. And we talked about some potential partnerships and business mm. ventures very good very very good meeting doing big boy things oh I, no i already i already said my win of the day on my on my uh story my win of the day is that i uh went to yoga today and i've been to yoga every single day this year wow what an accomplishment mm-hmm. and today is the fourth it's not like the first or anything for people listening so today is the fourth of of uh of January and I'm about to post Matthew's win of the day on my Facebook group Matthew's win of the day what was your win of the day uh learning more about cryptos and buying some other altcoins that should do some pretty good this month so there we go I'm posting the story right now yeah so for people listening uh I have a Facebook group called friends of ADP it is a private group, but if you're listening to this, I would love to have you in there. It has almost every single guest of the podcast so far in the group. Matthew's not in there because he doesn't have a Facebook because he's a little nub. I'm just uh, kidding. Yeah. 
Nah, but um, I ain't got time cool. for that. It's cool because you can have uh, Facebook groups now has stories. So everyone that's in the group can add to the story. It's pretty dope. So like, I'm surprised can, they hadn't had that already because like everything had, has stories. Well, Facebook has had stories, but Facebook groups didn't have stories. Ah. Facebook has stories. Like you could post your own individual story, but it's cool because the group story, everyone can add to it. But it's super underutilized. Like no one's really doing anything big with it yet that I've seen. So I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger. So if it's like a, a candle. So if it's here. like a group story, anyone can, that's in the group can add to it. But then who watches it? It'll pop up in your top feed, like when you're at your home on your homepage. Do you have to be feed? in the group to watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If it's a public group, you might be able to go uh, watch it if you go to that place. Yeah, because I'm pop like, up in the why feed. would I go? Why would anybody else watch it? Like if they were interested in that, they would just be in the group, you know? Yeah. But anyway, no, but it's cool because everyone can add to it. It's not just your own thing. So even though it's my group for my podcast, the podcast isn't all about me. I want to help promote everybody. I want to yeah. help create a little community. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, dude. So this is our second podcast. Mm-hmm. What was the reception like from the first one? Did you did anybody reach out to you or anything? Anybody listen to it? Uh, yeah, actually, like a couple of my friends listened to it. That's awesome. And they were like, "Yo, that's really interesting." Didn't have a phone for that long, and uh. Obviously, I didn't disclose too much about uh, NCBA, but yeah. probably some other stories to be told, but those are probably better left untold and to no, the public. Yeah, those, <laughs> those stones can stay turned turned over, <laughs> unturned. Um, but yeah, so last time we talked about how you went to this kind of boarding school and you kind of told your like little life story, sort of. So people, I, I'm going to recommend at the beginning of this that people go back and listen to that, but... Last time we didn't get to talk about your trip that you took, mm-hmm. your little solo journey. So I think where we left off last time was basically you coming home. Yeah, pretty much. After after your little boarding school journey. So what? just kind of like kick us off a little bit about like what it's been like coming back and then what inspired you to like want to travel more and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, when I came back, it was kind of like weird because I hadn't really seen anybody in a while because you weren't allowed to talk to people. Mm-hmm. So I stayed pretty low key for most of the part, most of the time. Got a job, uh, actually two jobs working at, uh, yeah, at the escape game place too. But uh, yeah, then then we took the trip because you obviously were in Spain and. Maybe not obvi- obvious. No, not obviously. Or yeah, uh, not obviously the listeners, but because yeah, when I was in CBA, you were in Italy for the summer, and then I wasn't able to go visit you, but mom and dad did. And then the next summer, you were in Spain, and luckily we got yeah. to come visit you. Then that was sweet. So then my parents and my brother came and visited us in Spain, which is sweet. We spent what like two weeks in Spain. Yeah, and that was my first time in Europe. So, it first was, time, yeah, I loved it. It was just like, it's just different. It's like, oh, just not the same thing every day. You have to actually think outside of the box just to do everyday tasks sometimes, such as, where's the bath? Oh, WC. Oh, that's the bathroom. Yeah, water closet. <laughs> yeah. That water was like closet. the thing that I could not, I don't even think I figured that out, like, what that even meant until the second time I was over there. I was just like, what the heck is WC and why is it always near the bathroom? I didn't even know that it like was together. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, water closet is what that stands for, which is silly. Yeah. It's like a British word, I think. But um, so you went and visited us and that was your first time overseas. Mm-hmm. And you had an awesome time. It was cool. And then you came back, kind of was still doing the same same old stuff, working the job, mm-hmm. reconnecting a little bit with some old friends, but not like a ton, right? Yeah. And then we went to like two, went to Ultra. Yeah, Matthew and, and I went then... to some music festivals. We went to Ultra Music Festival in Miami. Yeah, and obviously like the main, the we so the main um, reason for going over there was obviously to go to Tomorrowland. Well, but... that's, we're jumping ahead. Yeah. But so, so you went to Ultra. Was that the first uh, big music festival you ever went to? Like the biggest big one? You went to Bonnaroo before. No, I went to Counterpoint. I was like, Counterpoint 14. was not big. 
compared that to Ultron. That was pretty big. Dude, no. Are you kidding me? It had like three stages. Yeah. I guess you're in retrospect. And back then, that was back then it was big, big deal. Like Skrillex was headlining it, so it, was, it seemed huge. But it was small, dude. Like yeah. that place was not packed. Like my dad was doing dip and dots there, and he didn't even do very well because it didn't have that many people, man. Like remember? Yeah. Compared to the, when they had Tomorrow World there, I guess the reason it why was I thought it was so big was because the lineup for it was literally so dank. better than. Ultra this year for sure. Pretty much every big festival nowadays, like maybe not even like Tomorrowland would be also. The only you have one to put better, into consideration that we're pretty big Skrillex fanboys, so any lineup that Skrillex is on is ultimately better than any lineup that Skrillex is not on. Yeah, but I mean, dude, <laughs> Bass Nectar, Avicii, Pretty, pretty Lights, Lights, Steve Angelo. It was pretty good. It was stacked. Yeah. It was, needless to say, it was extremely stacked. Oh, yeah. I think I might have a counterpoint poster somewhere over here. I don't know. But anyways, doesn't matter. Um, but counterpoint was amazing. But you went to Bonnaroo before. That's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And that's camping. Yeah. I've never been to Bonnaroo, but Yeah, Bonnaroo's sweet because it's just like another one of those really good festivals just put on well. Everything goes smoothly. There's no like, oh, you have to wait in line so long for this or this was such a pain. They'd done it, so everything was good. Like Yeah. They they knew what they were doing. Yeah, Bonnaroo's just, like, established really well, and they're kind of just one of those staple ones. Almost kind of how Coachella has become now, when you think about music festivals, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, Coachella, Bonnaroo's just kind of that standard camping festival that kind of just sets the sets the tone or sets the expectations for, yeah. like, all other camping festivals, kind of. Yeah, that's, like, a really good first festival, I feel like, to go mm. to. And that was honestly the probably the best one i have been or like the best one since because ever since then i feel like it's just kind of gone downhill like people have just been like eh, other music festivals it's just like smack dab in the middle of nowhere in tennessee well the thing about music festivals is it's become a bubble like you couldn't have a lineup like counterpoint was yeah anymore because those artists are too expensive and a first year festival can't afford artists like that mm -hmm. especially electronic artists the thing about bonnaroo too is now that there's so many other festivals they're competing with way more whereas before it was kind of like a very unique thing and a lot of people have tried to copy what they've done there and i haven't been to bonnaroo but i can already kind of tell just from going to other festivals they've got their stuff together for yeah. sure yeah and, and it was they interesting have something that no one else really has nailed down exactly. And the interesting thing was the year I went was kind of maybe maybe years before. I'm sure they've always had electronic music artists there. Mm. But I felt like that year or maybe in the previous years they weren't always like a big deal. Like there was never one that was like people were like, "Oh man, I get to see this guy cuz he's a Bonner." No one went to Bonner to go see EDM people. Where this year I feel like there were the in 2014, obviously Skrillex was one of the headliners and then he did the super jam, which is crazy, but um, they didn't even really have like a specific stage or anything for EDM. Like the opener for Skrillex was Ice Cube, which is pretty weird. But don't they always do that? Not really anymore. Like now they have a stage that's only EDM. Like only EDM people play there. It's like the what or the other stage, huh? And it has like big LED screens on the side, but that's. Pretty much just like all EDM all the time. Only EDM people play there. EDM people don't play anywhere else. Where in the years before, they would EDM people were playing on every single stage. Yeah. And yeah, they it was kind of weird back then how they used to do the lineup. Like that really weird band called Policia opened up for Pusha T. So it's just the weirdest mix of people in the crowd is like a bunch of hippies. Just like all moseying around and then like slowly before push a t came on like people were trying to start like mosh pits and stuff and then and the music was just so not fitting for it and yeah. then once push a t came on it was just like a huge mosh pit and all these people were just like running out because they're like what the heck is going on i've never seen this you know yeah so that's not good yeah i i, I think i can understand why they want to do that because they want everyone to experience everything and they want crowd flow they don't want everyone yeah. just sticking at one stage. That was honestly the best part about it, though, because, like, for Skrillex, everybody who saw Ice Cube left, and you could just go right to the front. It wasn't just, like, a bunch of people with their camelbacks camping, camping. out all day. That's the thing. Is For example, at Ultra, 
if you wanted to see all Owsla people, you could just camp out at the front like all day long. Yeah. And yeah, whatever. But anyway, so you get you got into Bonnaroo, and then we went to Ultra. Ultra is awesome. Yeah. Uh, that like, year was sweet. For people that haven't gone to Ultra, it's it's not as like douchey as people say. If you are at the main stage, it's super douchey and people can be kind of annoying. But if you are at the other stages, mm-hmm. it's actually really awesome. Ul- yeah. Ultra is really cool. And it's in the middle of Miami. It's kind of a cool area. You know, uh, it's not it's not the best festival ever. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, of course. But uh, it's also weird because it draws like a different crowd. Like they have the whole mega structure stage. Where pretty much all those artists that play there, you don't really see on ever really performing ever in the U.S. Like Carl Cox will play, mm. you know, big events or I don't know all those like he might play EDC. Yeah, but you like only in another event like that. No, I feel like no one around here. If I ask yeah. most people that I or yeah, you get all the trans people and all the techno people yeah. there too. Whereas a uh, festival like Bonnaroo, they don't have a stage like that. Even though they might have EDM artists, EDM from an outsider is like, oh, that's the EDM stage. But from an EDM perspective, you have Ultra or Tomorrow World or Tomorrowland rather, and you've got a stage for every single sub genre, and you've got your own little niche cultures within those, and it's yeah. very very different. Like a guy that's going to see. Uh, some dubstep is not going to be the same person that's going to go uh, see a two-hour trance set. Um, I, I could be wrong. There might be that guy out there that, that would do both. Yeah. Because there's definitely people that cross over. But in general, a lot of like Shout trance, out Raving Tom. Shout out Raving Tom, dubstep and Tom. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's... Yeah, Tom, Tom definitely should be listening to this right now. If Tom is listening, what's up? Also, shout out <laughs> Raven Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay Carino, she needs the pump, and oh, also yeah. still uh, needs the pump. Yeah, all the all all of that squad: Jesse, Abby, Hannah, Julia. What up, everybody? Anyways, um, but yeah, Ultra is um is pretty awesome because it's got so many stages, and it's kind of similar where they have different stage hosts. I like that. Mm-hmm. But, like for instance. People at Lost Lands, I feel like, would have no clue who any of those people are that played Megastructure. Maybe some people would have some, uh, but just like maybe. that type of crowd is just, I don't know. Yeah. So anyways, we went to Ultra, and then this past summer, we went to Shaky Beats, right? Mm-hmm. And then we went to Tomorrowland, right, afterwards? Because Shaky Beats is in May. Yeah. I went to Bonner again. So Matthew went to Bonnaroo again this year. How was Bonnaroo this year? Lineup was I, uh, but it was a really good festival. Just because, like, I've honestly come to realize that the lineup doesn't have to be that good, but if the festival's put on really well, it totally makes up for it. Like, <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> yeah, Imagine was terrible. Even though the uh, lineup was decent, and I would have enjoyed it so much more if the festival itself didn't completely fall flat on its face. Yeah. It was like Irish, just blown up times like a hundred. The thing is that there wasn't anything. <laughs> there wasn't any one thing about Imagine that you can pinpoint and be like, it sucked because this. It was just everything in general was so toned down and not up to par with what we're used to seeing. Yeah. As far as festivals of that scale, so it just seemed so shitty in comparison. But if that was like a standalone festival and it was your first one, you'd have probably thought it was awesome. Yeah. But me and Matthew are kind of snobs now in the sense that we've experienced the best of the best in some ways and uh it just wasn't up to par but we can we can talk about that a little bit later because imagine came later but we went to shaky beats in atlanta mm-hmm. and we did vip which is the move yeah i talked about that on episode i think four with uh tyler small we talked about how we snuck backstage which was dope wow yeah, that episode was four wow craziness Nems. craziness um what did you say Nems. the mems yeah. So um, then we decided, well, we decided back in, about a year ago that we were going to go to Tomorrowland, which I'd already been to. Yeah. The best music festival on the planet, would you mm-hmm. say? Would you agree? Yeah, probably. What's, what do you think? Is there anything that comes close? Lost Lands. Wow. That's a heavy statement. 
I don't know. That was just the best festival. Dude, that's a heavy statement. I mean, that's like some stuff for the books. Like first year of Lost Lands, that thing's going to be huge. Yo, that is, for people listening, that is a heavy statement. And you know what? I I'd have to I'd have to I'd have to I'd have to agree, man. Like, Lost Lands is up there in the books as far as one of the most legendary of all time. For me, I mean, there wasn't a single thing I could say bad about Lost Lands. Not a single one. Maybe location is just kind of inconvenient, but the they could have the, they could have adjusted some things. I think they're gonna adjust a lot for next year. And hopefully not for the worst. I think it's going to be way better next year. Even. Yeah, for a first festival, they had the least amount of problems. And I think also they're the most eager to fix those problems. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or make it right tenfold, you know? Yes. Lost Lands, like, wow. I hadn't even put those on the same pedestal. Like when you're saying best festival in the world, Tomorrowland versus Lost Lands. They're very, 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 very different. But when you compare the two... As far as how much fun you had, how much of an awesome experience you had, they were very close. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about. Mm-hmm. Tomorrowland is a much more epic scale. Yeah. And, and it blew my mind even more. Like, the first time I went to Tomorrowland, it blew my mind. I think this year's Tomorrowland, looking back on it, might have been more, a little bit more mind blowing and more fun because I was, there was a lot of new stages. I was kind of knowing what to expect, but like still kind of blew me away more. Mm-hmm. And I went with you and I already had some other friends that were there too. Yeah. So it was just like amazing. Yeah. And Xavier. <laughs> Xavier Goddard. If you're listening, Xavier. Um, oh my God. He's the father of my child. Yes. And uh, I love him dearly. Okay. So, so let's talk about our trip. So, we decided to go to Tomorrowland. For people who don't know, Tomorrowland is the best music festival in the world. We kind of just announced that. I'm, I'm saying it definitively. I say it's the best music festival in the world. Yeah, for sure. Definitely best electronic music festival in the world. They only have electronic oh, yeah. music. So if you don't like electronic music, then you you probably would still enjoy yourself because it's like freaking adult Disney World. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you it's it's all electronic. So So yeah, it was like January... We bought the tickets and then... Yeah, let's talk about that. I think it was... So, yeah, obviously the way you get the tickets is you have to register in advance. Obviously, which, yes. If obviously. you're listening to this and you want to buy tickets this year, uh, you have to register. I think it opens up on January 9th, so this podcast will probably be out by then. Yeah, hopefully and, it'll be out by then. Today's um, the 4th. Yes. And then after you register, there's the pre-sale... Or no, there's Global Journey, then the pre-sale, then the regular ticket sale. At least that's how it was last year. Yeah, that's how they said it was going to be this year too, I think. But I don't think if you are the first one to register, you get guaranteed tickets. I didn't read anything about that. So that's the only thing I see that's different about it. Wait, what happened? So remember last year, if you were the first one to register, first five people to register from your country, you were an ambassador... And you were guaranteed at least four tickets of your choice, like to to purchase them. They got rid of the ambassador program. I don't think that's the thing anymore. I didn't read anything about it. Really? Yeah. I. But it could that, still be. I don't know. I read surprising. like the whole thing. That seems surprising. And it didn't. That seems surprising. They may have just like secretly still kept it. Yeah. Because I think that they really liked the fact that they could get someone from a really obscure country and get them to bring a bunch of their friends. Because they liked having that aspect where they could brag about how many countries were represented. Yeah, there. very true. But um, who knows? But yeah, so... Then, In, last January, so about a year ago, we had to register. And we decided to do Global Journey passes, which is like travel plus does, ticket. Does Global Journey go on sale first? Did it go on sale first last yes. year? Okay. Yeah, it went on sale first. And then remember the pre-sale and then the yeah, general yeah. sale. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, we bought global journey because that was just the easiest way to guarantee our tickets Because global journey doesn't sell out immediately typically and for the people listening global journey is basically tomorrowland's bs way of pairing a travel package with your ticket and the travel package is about four times the price of it if you were to just buy it separately but the problem is is they allocate way too many global journey tickets than regular general admission tickets. Mm-hmm. It, it might seem like there's just a ton of general admission tickets out there that you could acquire, 
but they basically force you to buy their travel packages because those are the only ones that haven't sold out. Mm -hmm. And it kind of sucks that way, but the demand is there and it sells out every single year. So you can't blame them for upcharging. Yeah, I mean, in Global Journeys, like the people who are like, yeah, I'll pay an extra 200 bucks just to guarantee a ticket pretty much, and those sold out pretty much instantly. We didn't even get them. We tried to get them, but Chad got them for us. And then obviously yeah. the, pre the normal sale, we couldn't even get into the ticket store. It went Shout out. out to Chad. Yeah. Chad is the, the man. <laughs> so um, are we trying to do, just, just a side note, are we trying to do both weekends this year? Are you trying to do both weekends this year? Not I want if we to. have to pay for relax rooms. Why? Dude, 12, 11, I mean, 1100 bucks is a lot. For an experience of a lifetime? Yeah, I guess. That's a tough one. Dude, I'm know. definitely trying to do both weekends this year. I'm definitely trying to do both weekends this year. Here's the thing, dude. Relax rooms it, are a privilege. Yeah. Not a lot, not like a choice, really. It's almost like if you can cop them, it would just you be nice just to be them. in Dreamville because, like, there's not really any that much sense of community in the relaxing area. Everybody's just kind of in their own mm, thing. Where true. that's always a fun thing. Like, dude, we're you're gonna be in Europe. There's people literally from everywhere. It'd be kind of cool to be showers though. Whatever. It's like three days. Don't be a wimp. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Anyways, so for people listening, so we did relax rooms, which means that instead of camping in a tent and bringing camping supplies, we have this little thing called a relax room, which is a little like shipping container thing that you sleep in. And it's really cool. It's got a little lockable door. You can stow all your stuff there. You're also in the VIP camping area. So you have access to hot tubs, uh, a little sauna, which I never went in because I'm annoyed that I or I never decided to do it. I'm kind of annoyed that I never did. Also, no, I'd, the sauna didn't work. Remember, it didn't work. No, it was just to store the wood for the hot tub. Oh yeah, you're right. So either way, a hot tub. It was a wood fired hot tub, which I'd never seen. Yeah, before. that was that super was actually weird. really cool. Um, in America, the, that would not fly. It was someone so would dangerous. get burned. Someone would get hurt. They would sue. And yeah. yeah. So anyways, RIP um, wooden fire hot tubs. Yes, for real. Americans are in everything. Um, but I was going to say the thing about relax rooms as well is you're in that VIP area. So it's a little more exclusive. You don't have to worry about your stuff getting stolen as much. Except for your wristband with all your pearls. Yeah, because you, yeah, I mean, you got that taken. You, the thing is, I is got my wristband stolen, people, because I took it off to go in the hot tub. Yep. And I had it in my shirt, and someone jacked it and replaced it with a deactivated one. It had about, like, 150 bucks on there, which is also another thing that... That's the only thing I didn't like about Tomorrowland is there's no pin for the money on your wristband. So if you lose it, your money's instantly gone. Mm. Yes, that is a downside. Here's the thing um, about Tomorrowland that I will say, though, is the pearl system on your wristbands is very convenient. Because you don't have to carry around cash, and it's one of it's the only cashless system that's been implemented almost flawlessly. You you need the at Bonnaroo. It was way more flawlessly. <laughs> really, all your credit card was linked with it, and then you had a pin. So instead of having to top up your card, which is a BS way of them of just raking in profits that you don't sp spend, every time you did it, it was just an extra charge to your credit card. All you did was scan it, type in your pin, you're good to go. Eh, kind of sketchy though when you're dealing with all the foreign currencies at Tomorrowland though. Like that's that's all yeah. well and good in America when everything's in dollars, but, but everybody has a credit card. Yeah, but just bill them in euros. Here's the thing though: a lot of credit card companies, if they see a lot of random little small multiple charges in a foreign country, they're gonna flag it and block it, and then everyone's gonna get pissed. They'd rather you just load the money on on the front end. Here's the deal: they also make a ton of money on that from the front end. So then they can fund stuff ahead of time because oh, yeah. everyone tops up beforehand. So they've got all this cash just sitting there that they can use to like fund stuff for the festival before. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, regardless, it's one, it's it's pretty flawless. It's, it's awesome. I like how they do the pearls because I like that you can choose your set amount. So also I like, you know, the pin is nice. So if someone steals your wristband, they can't screw you over because they need your pin. But uh, the pin also, you know, 
people are stupid and they like forget their pin or they like don't know how to type it in quickly or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. But um, we're kind of jumping around a lot here. But yeah. uh, the thing is, if we can get relax rooms for both weekends, I mean, I would do it. But I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll I think, think David said it. he wanted to do easy tents. Okay. Because Easy Tent, you're still in like a little bit of a VIP camping area. It's a little bit different, but they provide the tent for you so you don't have to bring your own gear. Because that's the thing is remember how much like stuff we were lugging around? Mm -hmm. We'd have to lug in almost twice as much because we'd have to have all the camping gear. Yeah, that's true. It's annoying. Yeah, but if you have one of those like uh, wheelbar, like the pull buggy things. Where are we going to get one of those? Decathlon for like 10 bucks. And then bring it on the bus? Yeah, true. Well, I mean, David, we, we drove in David's car last time, but still. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it's just sketchy when you're, like, not driving in your own car. It's just weird. But anyway, so uh, we went to, we, we decided to go to Tomorrowland. We got our tickets. I'd already been the year before. Matthew is his first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we flew into, oh, yeah, before that, though, you wanted to go yeah, on, so like, a longer trip. January. We bought the tickets, we bought relax rooms, uh, and then so I was looking at flight tickets, and I was just like, eh, I don't know, like, how long do I want to go? What do I want to do there? So I was just like, yeah, you know what? There's a ticket that's about a, a three-week window, or I think it was actually three weeks and five days or something like that. And I was just like, eh, what the heck? I'll figure it out later, and I just bought it. So just like... Guess I'm going to be in Europe for like three weeks and five days, so better start figuring out what I'm going to do. And I think it, uh, and you were just like, ah, you don't want to take off that much time. I've already, you know, you are, you'd already spent two summers in oh, Europe oh, before. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, my thing was, one of my stipulations with my job was I accepted a new position, like, kind of annoyingly looking back on it like it's kind of an annoying thing that I did but basically the two years prior I had left for the whole summer to do a massive trip and my bosses were kind of like we want to give you this promotion but we are only going to give you that promotion with a stipulation that you're not going to leave for the whole summer because we need you mm -hmm. and so I was kind of like at the time needing the money so i decided to n put a hold on trips and stuff which you know hindsight 2020 whatever like maybe i shouldn't have done it maybe i should have just said screw it and gone on more adventures and took more trips but you know what like i think this year was a good launch pad for my podcast and all that kind of stuff so yeah maybe going on the trip would have been a detriment to all that who knows but either way i could have I couldn't take off that much work. I could only and take off. And you already started the podcast at this point. I had. Well, not when we decided to do this, but yeah. I'd started it while we were in while we Before were in Europe. We I Europe had, yeah. yeah, I had started it already. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you're a hardcore listener, you would have listened already to some of our episodes or some some episodes that I actually uploaded from overseas. And one of my weekly updates is called "We Went to Tomorrowland," which is pretty cool. But um, so you can listen to that if you want to. Um, but yeah, I could only go for like 10 or 11 days. That was like really it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go to Amsterdam again and we had to fly into Milan because that was where the cheapest tickets were. So we flew into yeah. Milan. Well, I got my round trip ticket for 460. I think yours was 510. So for, so for people listening to this, Matthew got his plane ticket round trip to Milan, Italy for $460. And mofos out there be talking like they can't travel. Yeah, People and like, it was, and for everybody oh, that goes, ticket. oh, Round I don't trip. want the cheap airline. It was Delta in a direct flight. It was so. a direct flight on Delta. Great airline, direct flight, not sketchy. Here's the thing, people. You just got to fly into wherever it is the cheapest and then plan your trip around that. Because some people be like, well, I don't want to go to Milan. Okay, well, fine. You're going to pay more for your ticket. Here's the deal. Use like Skyscanner or something like that and find a super cheap ticket to Europe or to whatever country or continent you're trying to go to. Then figure out a secondary flight or something like that to the place. And I'm not saying that's always the best option. 
because sometimes buying two flights will be more expensive. But typically, you can buy a very, very, very cheap flight or train ticket within Europe. So if you go to Milan first and then you fly somewhere else or you go to Barcelona first or whatever and you go somewhere else, it would probably be cheaper than trying to fly into whatever destination you're actually trying to get to. Yeah, this is super true. And the train system is amazing. I'll talk about that more of course. later. But so yeah, obviously then, so yeah, we got, bought the plane tickets and then we already talked about everything in between pretty much. Kind and of, yeah. So you bought your plane ticket and you asked off work for like three weeks and your bosses were like cool with it or not really? Uh, so I told my boss I was needed to take some time off and he was already in between, like I had been asking him because I wanted to be full time, wanted more hours. He'd been like, no, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, fine, if you're not going to give it to me, I just kind of took it. I was just like, okay, well, I need three weeks off. And he was like, duh, duh, and then kind of freaked out and then yelled at me. And then basically everything was okay. Um, so this is the thing people was like, a lot of times people think that they're going to, their boss is going to like fire them if they go on like a three week trip or something. Which may be the case, but it's probably way easier for them to just figure out how to resume business as usual for those three weeks and get you back a, an employee that they've already trained, they already know that you know how to do the job. They're not going to be happy about it, but they'd probably it's probably in their best interest just to keep you around than to just be like, well, if you're going to do that, then I'm going to fire you. If you actually bring value to their business. Mm -hmm. If you're a crappy employee, you don't do your job right and you're easily replaceable, then no, they might just fire you. But if you're really good at your job, they've already trained you and they like you, they're not going to want you to leave. Yeah, for sure. And you don't want to quit, mm -hmm. but you just want to travel. Yeah. And that's my thing. I would never take off weekends. I never ask for days off unless it's a chunk of time where I'm going somewhere. Cause I'm just like, eh, whatever, I can make it work to work been take because i feel like some people are like oh i need this weekend off i'm like no why like the weekend's the best time for me because that's when i made the most money so i'm like no i want to work the weekends my day's off the, monday i think there's this weird societal thing with the weekends too it's like the week sunday and saturday are 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 just days yeah like people make such a big deal about the weekend like oh the weekend's almost here if, if you like live for the weekend you should probably like reevaluate why that is yeah. because it's probably indicating that you don't like what you're doing the rest of the week and that ratio is pretty skewed 5 to 2 mm -hmm. it's not very good so just a side note but yeah yeah so people you you're saying you never asked off unless it was like really something that you wanted to do so you felt that you you were entitled to ask off for a three week type of thing yeah and it's just kind of like whatever if i got fired it's not like it's i mean i can go find another job it's not the end of the world like there's always going to be opportunities so i it really didn't bother me nice and so i just did it and then he so was you like, bought the plane ticket first and then you played oh yeah, your trip i don't think i it. told him until like march or april and we we're leaving in july uh so yeah but then i i was just kind of like okay i'm gonna be there what do i want to do first i was like let's stick to one country and then i was just kind of thinking about all the different things and for some reason i got oh that's what it was we went to did we go to dc before or after we went to dc before this i think yeah so i honestly did not even have no 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 we went to dc after because we went to D.C. No, we went to D.C. And I before. had Lindsay on my podcast. Episode 20. I don't... Maybe. Maybe not. I'd have to no, look at the I dates. No, I don't think we did because... Let me look I, at the dates again. The reason why I went to Poland was to go to Auschwitz. And the reason why I wanted to see that was because we went to the Holocaust Museum in D.C. Ah, uh, that's true. We went to D.C. first. You're right. Yeah. But anyway, so my so family went to Washington D.C. I honestly did not have any plans of where I wanted to go, probably up until I guess D.C. because I really yeah, had right. no we idea. Went to DC first. Everything was just pretty indecisive. I was just like, okay, so I got this plane ticket. Where am I going to go? And I was just researching. I'm like, so what do I want? Do I want to go big cities? Do I want to go small? And so I came to the conclusion that I was going to be going there in a really touristy time. So I was like, if I go to Paris, London, all the major European cities that Americans think of. 
it's just gonna be super expensive and full of tourists and that's what I hate about traveling. I wanna like find the local people and go to the local spots and see how they do, try their food, not the overpriced tourist food. Tourist food, yeah. So not about that. So I was just I just decided that I was just gonna go pretty much west from Amsterdam. So yeah, I honestly did I pretty much had the all the places down until Budapest and then I didn't really know what I was gonna do after that. I had to figure out how to get from there to back to Milan. And the funny thing was I didn't have any hostels booked. I booked I think I booked two of them on the plane. Yeah. And just booked them as I went because I was like, eh, I don't know what area I want to stay in. Maybe I'll meet somebody and I want to go somewhere else. So yep. I had an itinerary of like, okay, this is my plan, but... It was a loose plan. If something better came up, it wasn't going to be... Because I would much rather... And that's the other nice thing. I, and I decided to go with the URL pass to travel around. Anyway, I'm, I'm all out of places. But... So I, I didn't really know where let's I was going to go. go. Let's just tell the story like in order of when we actually went rather than telling it from how you were trying to plan it. So, yeah. so we left to go to Milan, me and Matthew, Matthew and I, I should say. And we left from the Atlanta airport. We landed in Milan. And we spent, what, one day there. We got a hostel there. Mm-hmm. And we had dinner with my old host family. Yeah, that, that was, was cool. cool. And what else did we do in Milan? Milan, Italy. It's cool. It was your first time ate in Italy. Some, yeah. Ate what some did you gelato. think of Italy? I didn't really like Milan. Duomo was cool. That little mall area was cool, but it was just kind of eh. dirty. Yeah. So much n- n- unnecessary graffiti. Everything would just have scribbles that didn't mean anything. It wasn't even cool graffiti. It was just like, why? This is so such a beautiful statue. Why would you yeah. go graffiti something? It's on a very it? like Stupid. weirdly industrial kind of city. It's not a very touristy city. Oh yeah. Lots of business takes place there. Yeah. But yeah, so Milan, we, um, I showed Matthew around because I lived in Milan for a summer a couple of years ago. Yeah, if I wouldn't have been with you, it would have been so boring. Yeah, because you would have just been like, what the heck am I going to do here yeah. for one night? Yeah, so we, we went out to dinner and then I think that night we went out and just kind of walked around a little bit and saw some stuff. We tried to get some, remember we met those guys at the ATMs that they were trying to get money out and, uh. We couldn't get money out of the ATMs for whatever reason. We were trying to get money. That was in Milan? I think so. Because we were walking around that area trying to find the snails. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there's this area called the Navilia in Milan. And uh, I think that's what it's called. And it's like a little river that goes through. It's like a canal. And uh, there used to be these giant statues of snails all around when I lived there. So we were trying <laughs> to find them, but they weren't No there. snails. No more Fred. Um, but... So anyways, so we were in Milan. We stayed in a hostel right near the city center. Uh, that was a pretty cool hostel. We met that uh, Australian girl. Yeah. I actually didn't really like that hostel. Yeah, I it was know. decent. I, the after shower that hostel, situation was weird. What I, what I found out was I never wanted to stay in one with bunk beds again. Like all the other ones that I booked. Because I'm just tall. If uh. I get the top bunk, it's just awkward like I, just, I don't think i've ever done a hostel without bunk beds yeah all the other ones i stayed in did not have bunk beds it was huh. awesome so for people that are americans and don't even know what a hostel is a hostel is a lot of times they call them youth hostels and what it is is kind of like a hotel room that you share with a bunch of strangers mm-hmm. so they might it might have like six or eight beds in there or four or three or whatever and you all share like a common bathroom typically and um, you might have like a little storage locker that they give you so you can put stuff in. And they're super cheap. They're Actually, it depends on the cheap. city. What was the cheapest hostel you stayed in? Um, I think six dollars, like six euro six a night. Six euros a night. People. Yeah, the one and the crazy thing was that was in Poland. That was uh, that was the best hostel out of all of them. And it was the cheapest. Yeah, I'll I'll we'll, I'll get to that later. But yeah, it was the best for sure. Wow. So that's sick. But yeah, so hostels, uh, definitely when you're, if, if you've never been to Europe and you're booking a hostel on Hostel World, definitely just look up on like any, pretty much any, there's so many travel blogs out there. 
just look up like Berlin best hostels or something before you get to get on there because if you get a bad hostel, it's especially in certain cities, it just is no fun. Like it makes you, your experience terrible. Yeah. The best is to go with like the four to eight person hostels, not the huge ones, because then it just gets obnoxious and then you get like huge groups of travelers and then they leave you out. The best is to find, go to hostels with other, especially if you're solo traveling, other solo travelers. And if you're not solo traveling, don't be a, a jerk, like invite solo people along with you to adventures because it's just more fun. You get to meet new people. Yeah. But obviously that, and then pretty much all hostels have like a bar and a hangout area. And yeah. then they obviously, like when you check in, they always try to make you go to like the pub crawls at night, which you cannot do every night. It just, <laughs> so, such a toll. <laughs> um, so, so, okay, so let's go back. So we were in Milan. We did a little hostel, and we barely had any time to sleep. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, we went to bed kind of late at like 10, and then I remember we woke up at like 4 to because catch Because we had to get a train to the airport. Yeah. Train to the airport, which looking back on it- We should have just gotten a train. dumb. No, we should have gotten on the bus. The bus is a way better option. That's what I did when I had went to go back to Milan. Was took the bus mm-hmm. to the airport, and it was a lot easier because they left like every twenty. minutes. There was minutes. no buses that early though. I don't think. Uh, I think that was our problem. Okay. And the train. See, this is why I hate buses, and this is why I love trains. Trains, you know exactly where it's going to go because it can only go on the track. Mm-hmm. Buses. I'm always sketched out to get on a bus. Because if you accidentally get on the wrong bus, who knows where the hell you're going to end up. Yeah. But at least with the train, it's very predictable and linear. Mm-hmm. You know exactly where it's going to go. And I've it never... has a little thing on the door that has... Yep. The... And I've never really been that confident getting on a bus. <laughs> yeah. Every time I get on a bus, I'm always like, hope this is the right one. Yeah. You're always numbered. It's like a long five digit number yeah it's like this is the number five bus that doesn't tell me anything yeah whereas with a train you can at least look on the map and see where the train track goes kind Mm. of and know okay it goes on these stops and typically it'll you know be a little more obvious yeah so then obviously we're in milan very long we uh went to less than 24 hours went to amsterdam i think we just got like a hostels in amsterdam are expensive because i heard and airbnbs are too because i heard there's some law where an Airbnb can only be an Airbnb for like a year because what was happening was everybody was just buying real estate and turning them into Airbnbs and then everything was getting taken over. Really? So. That's interesting. The first hostel was like that one, the stay okay. It was all right. It was right next to Vondel Park. Yeah. That was that hostel was all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With those two super weird guys that were like, like trying to get us to try all their different weed stuff. We're just like. Yeah, it was right. a little bit weird. Yeah, okay guys. But luckily they left and they were gone like before we even woke up, so. Yeah, that one only had four beds in it, right? That little hostel. Yeah. We never really saw them that much. Yeah. But that was really fun because that was the pre-party. That day we went to yeah. the pre-party, the Tomorrowland pre-party. That was sweet. So we met up with our friends and we went on this like canal boat ride mm-hmm. and we drank some wine and rode on a little boat around the canals of Amsterdam. That was so cool. That was so fun. And uh, there was a little urinal at the front of the boat. (laughs) And you could, and it was hilarious because the boat was just this, it was the most simple boat you could ever have. It was literally just a hull of a boat that held like 20 people on it. Yeah. And that was it. You didn't need anything else. There's no waves, no nothing. It's it's just you're just driving down a little you're driving down the waterway, and there's this little like toilet in the front. There was basically just a hole, and you there was a tiny little door, and everyone could see your head poking out the top and your feet and your feet, but you just peed in the front of it, which is hilarious. Yeah, and then you could see it. You looked on the other side of the boat, and it was just going right into the water. Yep, literally, you're just (laughs) peeing straight into the canal, which is super funny. But anyway, so uh, we went on that. That's where we met Xavier. Actually, I'd met Xavier before, but I never really like connected with him. Mm-hmm. And he is hilarious. Xavier, uh, if you're listening, what's up, dude? Xavier is a French Canadian man who is one of the funniest people I've ever met on planet Earth. Yeah. And 
we always somehow found him randomly and it was glorious. But um, so Amsterdam is my favorite city, I think, in the world, I have to say, just for many, many, many reasons. But it's really cool, very like clean, very modern, not super clean, but like it just makes a lot of sense. Just the, the way Netherlands Amsterdam is, is just, yeah, just not even just the just not even Amsterdam, just the Netherlands is awesome. They're yeah. really cool people there, very diverse, very modern city, very, um, you've got the water mixed with the city. The canals are not annoying like in Venice. Like the whole city is made of canals, but you can still get around. Everyone rides bikes. You walk everywhere. There's lots of cool things to do, lots of cool things to see, tons of cool people, lots of travelers. So you meet lots of cool people. It's just amazing. And surprisingly, their tram system is really good. Like, they're above-ground trams, you know? Because it's just, like, no cars. Yeah. So it wouldn't ever really get in the way like it does in most places in America. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah, their their public transportation is pretty pretty superb for how for For, for how like, much of a challenge it is to have public transportation. Yeah, because they can't yeah. do a metro because un- that would be underwater. Mm-hmm. So anyways, so uh, we went to Amsterdam. We went to the Tomorrowland little pre-party thing. Uh, met up with a bunch of friends there. That was really fun. Did David go with us on that or no? No. No. We met up with David later. So uh, so then we were with our friend Chad and our friend yeah. Brad. They had a sweet hotel. They had a really cool hotel. And we took... Shout out Bumble Chode. Shout out to Bumble Chode Brad. Brad Millet. What's up, dude? And Chad. Chad... I don't even know how to properly say his last name. Pakai? Pai Kai? I don't know. Yeah, I thought he said Pakai. Pakai. Chad Pakai. Um, but so me, Chad, Matthew, and Brad, we all Matt, Chad, and Brad. <laughs> we all uh took the train to Breda. And we met yeah. up with David. And David is our friend who lives in the Netherlands, and we drove in his car to Tomorrowland, which was awesome. Because driving by car into Tomorrowland is a lot better than driving by bus. Because if you drive by bus, you can't. You're kind of limited with what you can uh, bring into the festival based on what you can actually bring onto the bus. And if you bring a car, you can bring a lot of your own food. You can bring a lot of your own stuff that uh, the bus just doesn't really allow you to bring. Yeah. So, uh, Matthew, from your perspective. When you got onto the grounds of Tomorrowland, well, first of all, just getting to Tomorrowland and getting to Belgium and that whole day process of like getting there was just a massive shit show yeah. because of the, all the logistics. But then once we were finally there, yeah, it was the best. Yeah, Tomorrowland is just fantastic. So, For from, you. from your perspective, what was that like? Uh... It was weird because it's like, oh, cool, we're in this little tiny town. And then you take a right and then you see like the giant Dreamville sun that says like, welcome home. And it's like, wait, what? We're in like the middle of a little tiny town. Where did, there's like, this is where it is. So yeah, from like Dreamville, you can walk to like an Aldi and a... So Dreamville is the area where you camp at Mm -hmm. for the festival. So everyone stays in, not everyone, but some people stay in hotels. Some people just come in for the day, but pretty much everybody, I would say, that it seems like everybody camps. Yeah. When I got there, it was almost like, this place looks like it's professionally built to have a music festival. Like, all the walking ways are wood. Like, everything is just really nice. And then, obviously, we got to walking, and you were just, like, showing me kind of around. I think Brad and Chad went or no yeah brad went to find the people did you he was feel did with. it feel like you were in a dream or something not really until we got to the montague which is where our or montego which is where the relax rooms were because it's pretty normal you're just walking down and you take a right and then there's this like felt tent it's like super nice you get in there it smells really good a little fact about tomorrowland they have these candles that they burn everywhere and they smell amazing. Like I've never smelled anything that smells like it. I tried to steal one of the candles and they caught me. <laughs> I was very annoyed about that. Yeah, that would I was sweet. so slick too. It I kind of smells like so that slick. candle in a little way. 
Yeah, sorry. For, this is this is not a smell cast. You can't hear, you can't smell these smells. Yeah, log we've on got, to andrewdeichpodcast.com slash smells to buy the scratch and sniffs. Yeah, we've got a <laughs> we've got some very premium smells here at the ADP, and uh, we 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 take pride in our smells here. Matthew anyway. got me this candle for Christmas. It's a pretty good candle. Anyway, they should so, sell Tomorrowland candles in their store. Yeah, they should. That would be, be genius. Sweet. But anyway. So we get in the smells, you know, there's like this pretty girl wearing like a flower dress, like all dress. Everybody's that's in working costume. there in costume pretty much. Like Disney World. Yeah, really is. And, you know, she's just like, okay, checking you in. Here's your and She's thing. like this cute, like British girl kind of thing or whatever. Like, like somehow has like some accent. Like, yeah. Okay, I'm going to show you to your room. Yeah. And then, you know, she has a little <laughs> key hanging up on the thing, hands it to you. And then there's another girl that escorts you to your relaxed room and then she's just like if you need anything just let us know blah 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 and then they give you free champagne and it's just like awesome super nice it, it's like a it's like a field you know but all the walkways are like elevated wood you're never just walking on the actual dirt or anything it's great which is crazy to think about mm-hmm. how this music festival sets up elevated walkways for the campsites yeah it was, it was so sweet. sweet. Um, and then obviously, like, in that little VIP area, so we like had... So, like, Tomorrow uh, World that flooded and stuff, if it flooded at Tomorrowland, it wouldn't even matter because all the walkways are, like, permanent or elevated walkways. Yeah. It's amazing. For real. But anyway, so then we get to our thing, we get the free champagne, and then... But, like, you've watched Tomorrowland videos and stuff like that growing up. You probably I watched... I never really... We were just... Keep in mind, we couldn't go in the actual festival. So, like, I had kind of seen... even just seen the rainbow, it. like, of Dreamville. Was that, like, Yeah, no, it was definitely just, finally like... here? Dang. Never thought I'd ever be here. And now right? I'm here. It's pretty crazy feeling. But yeah. then, uh... Walking into Dreamville... Because Dreamville... I don't know. Dreamville just has so much cool stuff. So... It's basically like when you walk in, you walk in like almost like the middle of the camping section. Like you take a right and it's to the festival and the VIP area that we were in. You take a left, it's Dreamville. So obviously we have like a closer area to the festival and then Dreamville is just like a little bit farther walk away. But you get into Dreamville and there's just so many cool little things nestled within the campsite. There's its own stage where the whole pre-party, I guess the day, so when you get there on Thursday... That night, there's a huge stage in Dreamville, the which is where, yeah, the gathering, which is where, uh, like, some pretty big artists play. I can't really, like, more like main stage people. Coon in the gang. Oh, heck yeah, let's do some hard style. But, uh... Doi, 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 yeah. doi, doi. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, who did we see that night? I think Lost Frequencies was there. Afrojack? Yeah. Maybe? I, I don't know. know. It wasn't that great. Yeah. The gathering for the weekend two. By the way, we went weekend two. There was two weekends for Tomorrowland. So Mm -hmm. one of the weekends had already happened. Yeah. And we hit up weekend two. So we'd already kind of gotten some things spoiled. Yeah. For us, unfortunately. But still amazing. Still amazing. So because part of Tomorrowland is like it's all secret until it all happens. Plus there's already like leaked pictures of the stage before weekend one even happened. So I'm like. But if you don't look at the forums, then. Yeah. But I was in like a WhatsApp group, so I was just like, oh, there it is. There's the stage. Uh, yeah. So anyways, um, you know, I've talked about Tomorrowland kind of a, a lot, I feel like, on this podcast. We don't need to go into detail of like every single day. But if you could just, from your perspective, what's the coolest things you remember about Tomorrowland and why is it so epic and why is it worth it and why are you going back? Honestly, just the production value is insane. Everything's just super easy and convenient. There's nothing really bad about it that I can think of. All the food's really good. All the stages are really good. The, honestly, like looking back on it, the core stage was so cool. Core stage was so underrated. They basically just took like a wooded air, like a basically just the middle of the woods, somehow nestled a stage in there and made you like, I felt like I was literally in the woods there. Like somehow the whole stage has like tree coverage and everything. It was sweet. It's basically just like a stage where you walk up these stairs and you, you walk into the woods. You know what that reminded woods. me of? What? The pair, the executioner at Lost Lands yeah. on the first night. Yeah. It was like a rave in the woods. Yeah. And it was magical. Yeah. It was so epic. And it was so loud. Yeah. 
That's another thing about Tomorrowland is the stages are stupid loud. Yeah. Compared and, to um, Imagine. Yeah, turn up the volume. <sighs> uh, but anyway, then the other, I would say this other cool, like the best thing was like that Budweiser Freedom stage. That was insane. The Budweiser Freedom stage, for people that are listening, you need to go look it up, but... Words don't do it justice, neither do pictures. They basically built the most insane indoor nightclub from scratch in the middle of this little town. Like, it's a two-tiered nightclub that's massive. It has a it has a balcony in it. In a whole, like, three and LED screens that cover the whole thing. giant LED screens on the ceiling. It's insane. It's not like multiple. It's one LED. It's like a giant LED board all connected. It's it's absolutely mental. You have to go look it up. It's, it's one of those stages where I'd rather be in the back just to look at it. Mm-hmm. And not Yeah. Yeah, it's it just too insane. epic to 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 talk about. But Tomorrowland has what, 13, 15 stages? I wanna say 18. Dude, I just realized I never edited my Tomorrowland video. I'm going to do yeah. that. I'm going to do that tonight. Yeah. I'm going to start editing it. I shot a bunch of stuff for Tomorrowland. It was a stage tour. Actually, it would be kind of perfect to, to launch it now because we're about to start thinking yeah, about next year. Yeah, do a little year. promo video with do it. A, pr- do some videos about uh, next year. Yeah. So anyways. But, um, yeah, I'd have to say those two are my favorite. Like, the main stage is cool, but there's just not really anybody that I care like deeply care about everybody's just kind of like oh yeah that big guy that everybody likes but I'm just not really that crazy I really like the smaller stages where except for Chami Chami at the main stage is one of my most memorable sets and Matthew and I got on a live stream multiple times yeah it would have been cool to be at the main stage for like main people just because of the production value they literally had like we never went to a main stage closing did we and people doing all types of circus tricks people doing tightrope it was pretty crazy. It was nuts. Yeah. I'm kind of annoyed that we never actually went to a main stage closing because those are always so epic. But Even everybody like that we Garrix. saw cl- instead of it was justifiable. Snails we maybe running not. running back and... F- yeah, snails, we should have gone to main stage. But that was kind of an epic set because we hung out with Xavier. The best was... There was like no one at that snail show too. Like so empty. Crazy. That's, that's the emptiest I've ever seen snails. But the best was uh, running back and forth from Excision, Excision and to Fat Boy, Boy Slim. Slim. That was one of the best moments of that whole trip. We were literally sprinting like so fast, just dodging. I that felt was like I was in a video theme. game. That was the theme of the weekend. It would be like, oh crap, there's someone else. Let's go sprint as fast as we can to get to the next stage. And we would just like, no, 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 like dodge. I felt like I was in people. a video game. That, that was, was so fun. epic. That was the last night too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, excision at Tomorrowland. Yeah, that was crazy. <sighs> that was legendary. Anyway, so uh, anything else to add about Tomorrowland of why it was so epic or why anyone should go if they're on the fence? Eh, it's sweet. And if you're making excuses, don't and just go. Stop being a pansy. And if you don't get a ticket, just buy a ticket to Europe. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Literally, you'll figure it out. You will there figure it out. There was so many opportunities to buy a ticket once we were over there. That's the thing is you. there are a lot of people that end up with extra tickets at the very end and then no one can buy them because no one's there. Yep. If you just get there, you will find a ticket. And it's probably intimidating if you've never been to Europe because like, I'm like, oh, foreign country. How do I do stuff there? But you're Dude, fine. Dude, Belgium is not hard to navigate yeah. everyone speaks english yeah pretty much yeah I, I only ran into a few people that only spoke french and dutch but like you can most get away speak with it. english as you're, well. you're fine everybody knows enough english to be able to say the most basic of stuff but yeah. anyway so then after Tomorrowland, we go to Am- back to amsterdam which is sweet um and we hung out with raving tom yeah shout out tom tom mccarthy what's up dude yeah, that was sweet. Some adventures in Vondel Park. Indeed. That was dope. Indeed, um, indeed. Um and then you And Maria. Shout out Maria. Yeah, for sure. And then you went home. Yeah, you went you had to go to Yeah, Milan. so after Amsterdam, 
I went home. Oh, yeah, we went to that ice bar. That was kind of cool. Oh, yeah. That was cheesy, though. A little bit. But it was kind of cool. It was like a bar that was completely made of ice. And uh, what was it? Techno Tuesdays? Yeah, we went to Techno Tuesday. That was that was the first that time we were in Amsterdam. That was Shannon, and then we ran into Xavier. <laughs> yeah. Oh that gosh. was funny. But anyway, so then... So then from Amsterdam, I went back to Milan, stayed at my host family's house, and went home. So this is now Matthew's solo adventure. Yeah, so... So how many more weeks did you have? I want to say three two weeks and a couple days. So we'd already been in Europe for what, like 10 days, nine, yeah. something like that. I so you had like days. two more weeks. Yeah, because I think I spent three days almost in every place, some shorter than that. So, so where did you go first and how so did you get there? I didn't even have anything really booked. I booked, honestly, most of it in Amsterdam after we were back from Tomorrowland, like a couple of the hostels. I had the one for Berlin booked for a while. So basically my decision was I wanted to go to, to see... Auschwitz because I was just like that would be super cool um just because you like you know just see it with your own eyes just be it was it was pretty it it was honestly for from the education standpoint I would say that the Holocaust Museum in Washington DC is a lot better they did a really good job of like explaining how everything was and everything worked versus when you go to Auschwitz you're just kind of like this is the concentration camp this is how things went here versus the one in DC did a really good job of just telling the whole thing like how Hitler came into power every from start to finish how everything happened how everything was but it the mind-blowing thing it there was at Auschwitz was the stories they would tell of like this job like they said the the best job you could have was being the person that would go down the toilets every single day and shoveling out all the all the crap pretty much because the guards, because you smelled so bad that the guards wouldn't want to beat you. Because everybody got pretty much beat every single day. And since everybody's starving, pretty much everybody has, like, diarrhea pretty much every day. Oh, gosh. And you're only allowed to use the bathroom. It, it is, like, the whole thing is so messed up. It's pretty much just, like, a trap to mess up. And as soon as you mess up, they, they kill you. It's, it's, yeah, of course. Like, it's so bad. It's so, so okay, you're getting, up. But we're getting ahead of yourself. So, I after am. Tomorrowland... Where did you go? Um, after Amsterdam, sorry. So after Amsterdam, Berlin. Okay, so what was cool about Berlin? What did you do? Berlin was super cool. Uh, first night I was there, met some, I think it was two girls from Australia. And they were both cool. We went to some club, this club called Tresser. It was pretty Tressa. sweet. It was super berliny did you have to take like your clothes off club? no i did not <laughs> um but yeah it's pretty like well-known club most of the clubs in berlin are like techno clubs so i was just like and eh, whatever these people wanted to, these girls wanted to go so i went with them and i think we were there till like three or four in the morning berlin does that to you man. yeah berlin you party till the sun is up and and you don't even realize you're doing yeah. it until the sun is up yeah you leave the club and you're like what the heck Why somehow it, it just happens out? yeah that happened with me and my friend we went out and we were like let's go out to this place and then we were like eh should we go home and then we met these like scottish dudes and they were like oh we'll pay for you to come to this club with us if you help us hit on girls in german to my friend. <laughs> so she was like, okay, if we're getting free admission, okay. So we went to this place and then we stayed until the sun came up. And we're like, what the heck just happened? Yeah, I wanted to go to that place. I heard some good things about it, but. And their metro out. system, like, goes all night long. Yeah. Berlin had the best metro. And you so can good. drink on the metro. Yeah. There's. <laughs> Berlin is amazing. There's just like. There's no. There's all those, like, the dumb little rules. And it's just. All the little dumb rules here just don't exist there. Like, actually, they're not really dumb because if you're living there, it is kind of like obnoxious to have people constantly drinking on the subway. Like at night, it's just full of drunk people. You're not technically allowed to, but the only punishment is it's like a 25 euro fine if you're caught drinking. But there's open container everywhere. You can drink anywhere you want. You can drink want, anywhere you want. So it's just whatever. Which makes it nice because instead of having to go oh, let's go with our friends and hang out at the bar and spend five times the amount of the actual alcohol cost. You can just, like, buy some beer 
and go to a cool park instead of just sitting in a dark room like there's you can do anything you want and you know it's not just like oh every- they love their parks over there in New yeah York. it's just it just makes more sense like i feel like here everybody just drinks anyway we're over there it just kind of like is an old everybody's just like oh whatever so what it's drinking like been there done that where in america it's like this oh sacred you have to be 21 and then once you're 21 you go out and get blasted and just, even though you've yeah. already drank since you're like 16 yeah secretly from your parents liquor cabinet yeah and have gotten blackout 35 times yeah for real and already gotten duis okay <laughs> anyways but um yeah berlin is amazing it has a really cool vibe because there's just like reminders everywhere of all the terrible things germany has done but all the young people are just like awesome and want to make it cool again so like literally where the berlin wall was there's a brick like a brick fake or it's like in this in the ground laid bricks where the whole berlin wall was and it's all throughout the city of germany like you or city of berlin not city of germany but you just it's it's there and there's pieces of the there's a there's a big chunk of it i think it's called like the east side gallery where you can go still see pieces of it that are still there it's pretty cool they're all like covered in graffiti but um yeah really like berlin the metro there's amazing runs all the time the other weird thing about europe is all the trains are just on the honor system. Like, when you go to the metros, there's no... Person checking There's no one checking the ticket. You go buy it. Who would never fly in America? It's basically like if you bought a... Like a ticket. It's like you buy the ticket, and it's good for forever. But as soon as you validate it, it's like two hours from there is when it's valid. That's how I think it was in Berlin. But to be honest, like there was one time where I needed to get, I was like late for the train I was trying to catch and I just like hopped on. I was like, eh, whatever. Yeah, I've fine. done that before. But it also is just, it's just kind of nice because like it's going to run anyway. So if like a hobo or something can't afford it, you know. That's very true. The train's going to run anyways. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. Yeah, that it, it's kind of interesting in that regard. But yeah, so Berlin uh was would you recommend people go there yeah berlin was amazing the hostel i was into was super good it was called circus hostel and it was really cool it had their own brewery in like the basement and then they did like the pub crawl thing but i oh wait no i did go i did go on one in berlin it was pretty cool um we ended up at some some other kind of famous club the pub crawls are always kind of lame because it's always They're just partnered like partnered with like cl- with with the clubs that kind of suck to get attention. So yeah, it's like every hostel has like a pub crawl thing, and sometimes you go to the pubs or whatever, and it's just all other hostel people. So it's like, oh cool. I'm like, when you walk in, there's no one. Yeah, and then yeah, you- and that's always the funniest when they take you to the places. The first place is always like that, the meetup spot. There's always no one there except for the people from the pub crawl. And then they serve you, like, nasty mixed drink shot things. It's just... Yeah. Sometimes they suck, but sometimes they're good. Um, That's hilarious. The best are ones that are just led by, like, a student or something. They'd have their own thing and not incorporated with a hostel. But anyway... Very true. So, yeah, but I also didn't say this, but the way I decided to get around all the places, because I ended up going to, like, five or six places, was the URL Pass. And I would only recommend it if you're not going anywhere east of Amsterdam, because there's a lot of restrictions. Pretty much from Berlin, from Berlin I went west, and all those countries, the way their train system works is they're just the basic train, they just go at a normal speed, and you don't have to have any type of ticket reservation, you just buy a ticket, you get on the train, you go, just like a normal thing should be. But in like Italy I know, and in London, the Euro Pass does not work anywhere in the UK. It doesn't work in Italy? Uh, no, it works in Italy. Just in the UK, it doesn't work. It's not valid. They have their own thing. But uh, it works in Italy, but all the trains that you want to take to Italy are high-speed trains. So one, you have to have a seat reservation, which costs an additional fee. Um, 
And then a lot of times they I was gonna just say don't... Italy Italians are very proud of their train system. Yeah. Like I noticed that when I lived there with that family. Every time there was like a fast train, that my host family would always like comment about it. They'd see it on the side of the road and be like, Oh, there's a train nord, that's one of the new fast ones, it's really cool, blah blah blah. Yeah, I never got to ride on one of the really fast ones, which kind of sucks. I got to ride on one of the fast ones. It was sick. And I was in the like first class because they had paid for it. And I was in this plush area that looked really futuristic. And we had like leather yeah. seats and like a desk in I front of us. I think that's and why stuff. they don't, they because you can tell just like the upper scale countries, they have all these rules on the URL pass. Like there's only a certain number of seats that can be filled. And I think it's just because they know the only people who have the URL pass are just like backpackers that are just kind of like getting by with just the cheapest thing they can do and they just don't want that they just want to keep their trains nice because also in italy um lots of like business people use the trains because they might have to do business in another city and it's way easier than having to fly yeah trains uh are so much more convenient than flying because especially when you don't have a car and you're not a citizen because one you can always take the metro to the main train station and then from the main train station in the middle. So you never had to pay anything for an Uber or a bus or anything to get to the airport. So you just, you know, your train's at one o'clock. You say, okay, it takes 10 minutes to ride the subway or the metro to the train station. You get on your train two minutes before it leaves and you go. You don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, it's so weird that there's not really like high security on trains. Oh, there's none. A plane. You don't, not a single person checks your ticket until you're going. But if you're caught without a ticket, but the it's not fee, even the ticket thing. It's yeah. like on a plane, they're searching all your luggage. They're searching all the stuff on a plane. You, on a train, you just literally walk on. Yeah, and I think it has something to do with the fact that a train could potentially stop and like kick someone off if they had to. Whereas with a plane, you're trapped with that person. And in it's the a sky. lot bigger. Like if you had, and a plane is so compact. Think of how long it takes just to unload an airplane. Like. You're packed in there like sardines, whereas a train... There's so many doors. You probably can fit, like, just as many people as one of those giant airplanes, and the train. The train's, like... More. Way, way, trains way, way longer. Lower, way bigger. And that's the other thing. Trains are just way more comfortable. You have way more leg room, and there's, like, plugs, and it's just so much, so much better. You can get up whenever you want. There's tons of bathrooms. The bathrooms are big. It's just so... And then you get to your next city, and you're there. You don't have to worry about... Okay, how do I, where's the bus? How do I catch this? How do I get here? You're how do I get to city. my hostel? Pretty much every hostel has instructions when you get there from the main train station to say, okay, all you do is hop on the metro, take this stop, walk a block, and you're here. Like, it was just super easy. Leave one, get on the metro, get on a train, get off the train, get on a metro, get to your next hostel. Like, so much less hectic than the airport, even if it takes longer, because at the end of the day, it's really not saving you any time. Because you can actually be doing productive stuff during that time versus walking around and going through security. Like you can be just solid reading, learning about the next place you're going to go to. It's just a lot better. Sweet. So after Berlin, you took the train to where? Um, Berlin. After Berlin was Prague. Um, And Prague was... uh, Technically, what's the country? Czech Republic. So I liked Prague. I think it was just the hostel I got in with. I didn't meet anybody. Like the whole time I was kind of just never really like clicked with anyone. Like I met with some, I met some, some like French girls last night. They were pretty cool. But the first night it was just all these weird dudes from like some, like I think from like Slovenia or something. They were like, didn't speak very good English and they were just like, I got there and they're all just like passing around a bottle of whiskey. It's just like, Ew, what the heck? It's like one o'clock. Uh, <laughs> and they're just like, hello. And I'm just like, what's up? And I just kind of left. And then they left the next day and then the cool people <laughs> got there. So, so typical. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. You never know like what to say when you go into the hostel. Yeah, but, you don't um, know a language to speak or anything. Yeah. But uh, that's also the nice thing about hostels. If you get a bigger one, is like if you don't like the people the first night, chances are they'll be gone by the morning. Then you get some new people in there. So it's true. It's pretty cool. But Prague, just when I was there, it just felt very touristy. I had a hard. I, I it was probably out there. I just didn't do a good enough job of like finding the real like authentic restaurants and stuff. I always just felt like I was walking around. And I'd be like, eh, 
Should I go to this place? No, it's too touristy. Should I go to this place? I don't know, too expensive. And I just felt like it was a money trap and there was just so many tourists. Like you could just tell. I don't think I saw, I don't see why anybody would live in that city. It's just like a medieval tourist trap almost. Seemed Prague. like to me. So you especially don't, you the don't old, recommend Prague? Especially the old times, old town square. But I don't know. So many people like it. So, but it's touristy. Uh, maybe just the area I was in, I was like a block away from the main touristy square. A lot mm. of people have had a good experience with it. I didn't, but probably just because I just was like lonely. I didn't meet anybody and didn't really do much there. I just kind of like walked around, saw a couple of sites that I wanted to see. And yeah, um, didn't, the one thing I didn't do yeah, then there's like the famous five-story club or whatever. But it was like the line was so long and the admission was like 30 bucks. And just like, whatever. It's not worth it. No, it's um, stupid. So, yeah, I didn't go. I, I just felt like there was a lot of tourist traps. Now, I'm sure if you knew where to go, I'm sure it's really cool. But I just didn't feel like that. So, let's see. I'm in Prague. Then I went to Krakow, Poland. So let's keep a tally. So you went to Italy first. You'd never been to Italy. Mm -hmm. You went to Amsterdam, Netherlands. You'd never been there. Yeah. Then, then you went to uh, Belgium. Antwerp. Yeah, Belgium. Belgium, never been there. Mm -hmm. Then we went to. Then you went to Germany. That's fourth country. Mm -hmm. Never been there. Then, then you Prague. went to Czech Republic, fifth mm -hmm. country. Never been there. Now where? You went to Poland. Now, yeah. So Pro or uh, Krakow is in Poland. That so was the honestly sixth like. So I was kind of like, okay, I don't know what to expect when I got here. But Poland is just like super cool like it just it felt like i was almost at home like there's just a vibe you, you can tell when you're in a touristy city because you just have you know street peddlers selling selfie sticks and come take a picture with me this and give me some money that like it's just people selling junk that like if you were to live there it'd be like n it, n these guys wouldn't be able to stay in business because no one's gonna buy their crap the only like there was none of that i get there and i just felt like Oh my gosh, everybody's just minding their own business. No one's coming up to me trying to rip me off or sell me something. This is great. And that's how it was pretty much the whole time. I wish I would have spent more time there, honestly. Because it was like super clean. Got to the hostel, like I said. It was like $6 for the night. It was perfect. They were like, oh, what are you doing? They, The owner had, like the actual owner lady cooked us dinner that night and cooked us breakfast in the morning for free. Whatever you wanted. She'd be like, do you wow. have any requests for breakfast? I was like, no. She's like, well, I make just like an assortment of stuff. But if you have any requests, just let me know and I'll make it for you. Wow. And literally six, I think it was six euro. Wow. Ridiculous. And pretty nice. Like that was one what of the bunk beds. What was that hostel called? Do you remember? Uh, new Generation Hostel. I don't know. And she was like, so what do you, she's like, so let me guess. You're going to Auschwitz. And I was like, yeah. She's like, ah, I, I, she's like, and let me guess, you're only staying one night. And I was like, yeah, she's like, well, you're going to figure out pretty quick that this is one of the coolest cities around, like, and you messed up not booking more days here pretty much. Like, that was the first thing she said. And I was like, dang. And then the longer I stayed there, the longer I was like, this place is super cool. Like, I wish I would have stayed there more because that's just like, yeah, it's super cool. But what was so cool about it that besides the non-touristy part, did you do anything in particular? Was ridiculously cheap i think i took out 20 euro in their money and that was all i needed to pay for the hostel eat go to uh like go out and um get take a bus to aus i can't i don't know how to say that i'm gonna sound dumb saying it. it's like aus aus ausim is like the city that auschwitz is in so it's like 45 minutes away from krakow and <laughs> So she told me to take this one bus, but the ticket window lady was like, no, take. She's like, this one goes to Auschwitz now. I was like, okay. And I bought a ticket and then I get to the bus and there's about a line of like 60 people. Now this would be about the equivalent of a short bus, maybe even like a sprinter van with like the seats are two on one side, one on the other. And it's a line of like 50 people waiting and they're like, no, we have to save these shots for people with tickets. So I get their hand of the ticket, get on the bus, get one seat by myself. And the next thing I know, 
It's like the whole line of 50 people is all trying to cram on this little tiny bus. So you get to cut the line because you already had a I ticket? Because I bought a ticket from the ticket window. Yeah, it was stupid. And they were charging the people getting on the same price. And then I realized it's like a, it was like a metro bus. It was like a, it was like a shuttle that went all the way there and all the way back. But it would stop at certain points if you wanted to get off. Uh, but so what happened was, I mean, so should you have taken the hostel lady's advice? I really didn't have any choice. One of the ticket windows, I was like, yeah, I need to get the hour stream. And she was like, here, and just handed me a ticket and told me how much it was. And then it said like the number that the platform was on. So I was just like, that's always whatever. so annoying when, when you can tell that the person at the ticket window doesn't want to deal with it and they deal with tourists all day long and they don't want to help you and they're not friendly. Yeah. So that's the thing is if you can speak the language, they're going to be accommodating and be like, oh, yeah, you, well, this one's a little bit better, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like how when we were in Belgium and then all yeah. of a sudden David started talking to people in Dutch and they're like, oh, these yeah, people he was are like, just stupid Americans. He was like, we, don't, we didn't have a parking pass and he was just like, ah, it's okay, I'll get out of it and just started saying something in Dutch and they just let him through versus the first like, no, you don't have a parking pass, you can't get through. And they who's speaking English and then he started speaking Dutch. They're like, oh, okay, you're fine, go through. But anyway, so yeah, she crams me. So we get on the bus. Next thing I know, like literally... The whole line of people was trying to get on this bus. And I mean, we could not have fit one more person. It was so cramped. There was every single person had someone sitting on their lap. It was like all Even families. You? No, I didn't have anybody, but there was a guy like touching me the whole ride. Like the whole aisle, the whole bus was so full. So we're driving down the road and Is then a we man stopped. touching you? Oh yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> And uh, there's a man touching me the whole ride. It was so weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, tr I tried to get a, v and the leg room was like non existent. I couldn't even sit in the chair without having my legs um, turned to the almost side. Almost like when you're in the school bus, little kid, and you like sit slouched with your knees resting upon the seat in front of you. Y'all, the ride the school bus know what I'm talking about. But uh, it was All like that, OGs. but even worse because the seats weren't leather and they were like cloth. So it was like digging into my knees. So we're driving down the road, oh, gosh. and I see the bus start to stop, and then we're at the stop, and there's two people standing on there, and somehow we fit two more people on this bus. Like, I'm just like, what the heck? If we crash, like, and the driver was going crazy, you know, Europe, like European driving is all whack. They're all cutting each other off, and it's like two lane roads, and so then we're driving down the road, and then sure enough. Another stop, and somehow then we fit two more people on this bus, and I'm just like, okay, I'm starting to get claustrophobic, blah, 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 but I kept my cool, and I was kind of sick, too. Um, I was like when I first started getting the food poisoning coming on. So then, luckily, though, the next stop, some people got off, and then the next stop, more people, and then we got to uh, Auschwitz, and then I got off, and everybody pretty much got off. But then obviously I didn't take that bus back. There's another bus I saw and I was just like, I'm taking this one. I don't even care if it's twice as much. Uh, so then, yeah, Auschwitz was really cool. Um, there's obviously, you see like Auschwitz 1, which there's a lot of the remains. Then Auschwitz 2 is pretty much all like gone. It's just like a field. They have the main guard tower and then a couple, like the train tracks are still there and stuff. But it's still just like crazy to be at the same place that all that stuff happened. But um, then after that, got the bus back, and then actually it was that day. Yeah, then I had to. Then I went back to the hostel, and I had a night train that I took to Budapest. And then once I that night train, did you was sleep not, on the train? Yeah, I think so. I, like I said, I didn't feel good because I know I ate this burger in Prague. I don't know what it was if it was food poisoning or just a stomach bug. But then the night train did not help with that whole situation because I just felt like that triggered it to just get... That's when I... Because I didn't get very much sleep on the night train, and then I... When did you meet Lush Sucks? That was in Vienna. Oh, okay, we're getting there. Never yeah. mind. So, the train... The night train... It kind of sucks. Like, it left at, like, 6. So, you're not getting any sleep, and then it arrived in Budapest at, like, six in the morning so it was like a 12 hour total deal but you didn't get very much sleep and the bed wasn't very comfortable luckily it wasn't full. so it does have a bed oh yeah so the way these it's weird the, the cars are completely different there's no seats you get in there and it's like you know on the cruise ship how the beds come out of the walls there's three beds stacked high on each side so you're in there sleeping with like six other people it's kind of weird and there's no so air in a little room so it's kind of hot 
Yeah, but the room is literally not very big. Like the walkway in the middle is about as big as a twin size bed and it's just three beds stacked high. And there's special night trains? They only yeah. do night? Yeah, it's a sleeper. And on, you have to get a reservation. The reservation was like three bucks. But yeah, so there's only $3 more to get the night train with a bed and stuff, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, do they change the sheets or anything or what's the deal? Yeah, there's a little sheet on the bed that's fresh. But it just wasn't, the bed was too short for me, like, and it was wall to wall, so I couldn't even spread out. So I'm six one. if anybody's listening to this, so it was a little inconvenient. Yeah. But luckily, there wasn't actually six people in there with me. It was just these two British girls, I think, and uh, they were hilarious, and they had just, like, they were just getting, like, wasted on this night train, and <laughs> it was funny. Um... I think one of them ended up like throwing up out the window, but <laughs> and the the weird thing was since it was like from Poland to to Budapest, like it's not a it's not Common like your destination. Yeah, and the the train tracks from it is the slowest train. It would start and stop and start and stop. It wasn't just like you know normal train where it just goes really fast the whole time. It was very weird. There was most of the trip we'd be moving like. 10 miles an hour i don't know why but it just seemed like the railroads and stuff weren't very kept up um but anyways then i finally got to budapest got into my hostel super weird hostel but it was cool so budapest is in hungary for people yeah i don't know so that's seventh country right mm -hmm. budapest was like i really wish i was not sick there because it was so cool but whole it was so hot Holy crap. It was like 110 degrees because there's some heat wave hitting and being sick and having the chills like it was not good. No hot. They don't have air conditioning over there pretty much in all the hostels. So just like being sick was not the move in that place. Thank God it was like with that room. There's a lot of bathrooms because I was going to the bathroom like every like three hours or so. I didn't really leave much. When I first got there, I went out and explored the first day, but I felt awful. And then the second day, I didn't leave at all. But it was really pretty. Like, the whole city's on, like, a river. That city's really cool. It's a little more a little more rough on the edges. Like, you, you don't feel as safe there for sure, but it is really cool. Um, Why do you not feel safe? I don't know. Just, like, at night. It's just, not, it's just got a little grosser, but at the same time, it's cool. Like, I don't know how to explain it. And it was, it was really big, gigantic. Like, for instance, just the way the subway was. Like, I showed you the picture of the metro there. The cars have not been updated in, like, 100 years. <laughs> and, like, the way the door system works, they don't open automatically. You have to, like, yank them open. And then when they go to shut, it's just this really loud, and then it's, like, fast as you can imagine. The door just, like, shut. That is and, not good for the mic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope your ears are doing good. <laughs> no, it's Headphone okay. Headphone listeners. It'll balance it um, out. But that is going to pop so loud. But, uh, but, yeah, so they just bang together. Yeah, and then the Metro, they say that... Um, That's kinda, the Berlin ones are not super new either. Oh, this is not bad at all compared to the Berlin ones. I mean, these cars... I've seen some old ones where you have to yank the door, but... No, this is, like, so bad. It's, like aluminum body they're like blue and when they start up they start up super fast and they break super fast everybody just slides around it's it's super old like if you look up pictures of it it's just metal everything's metal <laughs> it's like a tin can just going down the train track it's super Sketchy. bumpy going way too fast just does not feel right at all we got you there's just a lot of things that are just like is this safe i mean everybody else is doing it but it Something it's about it. Just, that's how the whole city seemed. But everybody's just going with the flow. So it was kind of cool. I like that about it. Um, and like you were sick the whole time. Yeah. So I didn't really get to go out very much. Met like one dude from Australia. It was cool. Um, I feel like you meet so many people from yeah, Australia. Yeah, so many Australians. But they're never in like the touristy areas. They're always in like random little spots. Yeah. They're always like, yeah, I went for a 12 week sailing in Croatia. And just like weird <laughs> stuff like that. It's like... <laughs> Oh, nice. Yeah, went for a, uh, went for a little, went for a, uh, <laughs> did, did a two-week bender down in, down in, down in. Yeah, did a, did a couple of shoeies. Did a couple uh, of shoeies down there. <laughs> and they go hard. 
Australians go so hard. Dude, for sure. Man. They're wild. I love Australians. I've never met an Australian that's not, cur- like, just... Not down. Yeah. <laughs> Always super down. Australians are killing it, man. I Especially... Well, here's the thing also they have to keep in mind. You were meeting traveling Australians. Yeah. People that travel and people that are adventurous are typically very cool people. If you go to Australia, like, like and for example, the reason you why meet- so many Australians travel is because like you said, the population is about the size of LA and it's almost like it's bigger than half of the United States. So imagine being like trapped on an Island with that big. So you kind of have to leave. It's like you can go to other cities in Australia, but yeah, you pretty much have to hop on a plane if you want to go anywhere. Yeah, and the other thing is, is they're all along the coast. Like every yeah. Australian city, every major one is on a coast, even though it's huge. But you're right. Like traveling, they they've got to go to Asia or Europe or whatever. It's far, but mm-hmm. but anyway. It's cool. So yeah, Budapest is pretty cool. If I wasn't sick, and then after Budapest, I went to Vienna. Yeah, Vienna. So that's Austria. So that's the eighth country, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to just go ahead and finish tallying them up, I went to, uh, oh, well, I guess it's no more because Munich's in uh, Germany. But anyway. So you went back to Germany. I rode through some other countries. Does that, it count? I don't know. Uh, I guess. I, well, I was thinking about titling this podcast like X countries in X days or something like that. Like so how many countries was 12 it? 12 countries how in nine countries days or whatever. So did you count? I think I just counted eight if you have the last one, which was Vienna, Austria. Because mm-hmm. you said, we, let's go over them again. We have Italy. Yeah. Italy. Netherlands. Netherlands. Belgium. Belgium. Germany. Mm-hmm. Pol- Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Poland. Poland. And uh, Hungary. Hungary. And Austria. Austria. I gotta pee so bad. You have to pee? Dude, I kinda have to pee too. Pee break. Ah, man. You're ruining the streak. It's okay. Just go for it. (laughs) I'm gonna pee too. I'll pause it. I'll pause it, everybody. We're back. We back? Cool. Wait, wait, wait. Go like this. No, you're fine. Okay. Sounded like the mic was kind of like rubbing against your shirt. I don't touch it. It's fine. All um, right. <laughs> no worries. We're back. We're already back. Oh, uh, we're back. You're not going to uh, cut that out? Nah. It'll be oh, funny. Oh, man. All right. I don't like to cut stuff. See, here's the thing about, here's the thing I like about podcasts is I like it when it's more like raw and like nitty gritty and you get to hear the weird stuff. Like, some people might cut out the part where you go, oh, I need to pee. But I think it's funny. Like, I like yeah. that. Or the part just now where, you, where, where, you, where you're going to adjust the mic again, but I'm like, nah, screw it. Like, people, pe- I'm curious. When I'm listening to a podcast and there's an awkward break, like, I want to know what's happening in between. Mm-hmm. Like, even if I just kept the mics running and we unclipped them and, like, left or whatever, you know. I don't anyway. know. So... Anyway, so- Vienna. So, then, so we said eight countries, but yeah. do we count? Do we do now, you count the ones the one, that you traveled like in between? There's like one that's in between uh, Poland and Czech Republic and Vienna. We don't need to so, count it. We can just say eight countries. Yeah. Um. So yeah, eight countries. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so eight. yeah, Budapest was cool. Didn't really get to do much because uh, I was stuck in the bed. And then so yeah, then Vienna. I was feeling a little better in Vienna. So that was that was pretty sweet. How was Vienna? Vienna was really awesome. Like I really liked Vienna. I don't think I was only there two nights, but I got there late and then I was only there for like a full day. But that was one of those cities I was just like, wow, this place is super cool. Never been to Paris, but I feel like if I feel like it's a lot like Paris, like what I would expect Paris to be like. But it's Huh. So is it super I touristy? Think, no. Because Paris is super I, I touristy. I can't remember. No, just like the architecture. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I don't... 
I can't think of uh, what they what they said something like unpopular opinion. I didn't really like Paris that much. To yeah, be honest. I don't think a lot of people do that travel. Like I've never really heard anybody. Paris who travels is hella touristy. A lot say they like Paris. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's just super super. Everybody touristy. always just says like the French coast is way better. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, you need to go there. Yeah, you need to go to Monaco. Yeah. <sighs> See some cars. Yeah. This, uh, this girl I was talking to the other day was telling me how she went to Monaco. She was like, if you can go to Monaco, go there. It's sweet. And I was like, yeah. I'm putting that on my list. I'm trying to figure out my trip for this coming season. But uh, let's keep talking anyway, about your trip. So we'll, we'll- Vienna was super cool. My favorite thing about Vienna is that uh, Vienna in German is Wien. So everything is Wiener. And uh, <laughs> like the water fountain is like a Wiener Wasser. And, and water is Wasser. So, but it's spelled a W, so it looks like Wiener Washer. And uh, Vienna water is Wiener Wasser. Yeah. And so Which they, is have amazing. These little, they have these little drinking fountains everywhere. And it's really good water because they have these natural springs. It's like, or it's so good. Like the water was really, I don't know. It's just really crispy. good water. Yeah. Just crispy. I would like fill up my water bottle and be like, man, it's really good water. But, uh, you know, normally when you fill up a water bottle from a drinking fountain, it's like, ah, this tastes like a plastic, it tastes like a mouth guard. But, uh, <laughs> but this wiener water was so good. I mean, anyway. Wiener water tends to be pretty good. Yeah, it does. Uh, but anything like, everything is like wiener. So it's like wiener world, like just... <laughs> It's just funny. Like, my little kid was just laughing at everything. But, uh... You have a little kid? Yeah. Inside. My little inner kid. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say So, um... So, Vienna is awesome. And you met Lush Sucks, which... Yeah. People might not know who so, that is. So, funny story. Andrew's showing me... There's, like, there's like a painting or a picture... A mural. Of, no, no. It's just, like, a picture of this mural of a random place that Andrew showed me. I don't think it was that. It was, I'd seen the, so there's this guy named Lush Sucks and he basically just paints memes. And Andrew sent me, uh, Andrew or someone showed me a picture of one of them. was like, look at this guy just paints memes. And I was walking down this boardwalk and I was like, yo, that's that meme. It was the one about, uh, I think it was like Jesus wore these air Bethlehem's or something like that. It was like a picture of like these sandals with a Nike symbol. And he was talking about how like... It was like Jesus wore these Air Bethlehems in the last game of uh, of the championship. Or games during game six of the championship yeah. or something like that. And then I was like, oh, that's that picture Andrew showed me. And then I noticed there was like a bunch of them. There was like Pickle Rick. He started doing a bunch of Pickle Ricks. They're just huge Pickle Rick graffiti things. And, um, and I'm walking down. And under this bridge... There's this guy graffitiing a picture of Donald Trump and Kim Jong Un, but their faces are flipped. You've probably seen the pictures of it, but then he was painting it on the wall, and uh, it was a. And then I looked and I was like, "Yo, that's the guy." And I talked to him, and he was a super cool Australian guy. And I was just like, "Do people know you are?" He's like, "No, nobody like recognizes like, me." Yeah, he was like. You're like one of the only people who have come up to me and said you follow me on in- like one of the few people that can't come up to me and said they follow me on Instagram. Everybody's in America, and they just like love the pickle rick graffiti and stuff. And uh, see, so yeah, I was really funny talking to him. And then he was telling me about how he was banned from America because he had a. He was like, yeah, the visa thing is so messed up for Australians. He said he stayed one day too late because he just miscalculated his flight or something. And they banned him for like 10 years because he just didn't leave the country. He overstayed his welcome pretty much, which it's just a little so stupid. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, he was, he was pretty cool. I was talking to him. He's pretty funny. And then I actually ran into him again. Uh, Cause I was just kind of chilling, sitting down watching like the little boardwalk they had. How long was in between? Did you run into him again? It was like 15 minutes. Oh, but yeah, it was pretty crazy. He had like a ladder and like a whole one of those big IKEA bags full of spray paint. Yeah. And no one cared. Like <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. But yeah, or yeah, it was getting too dark, and so then I like walked with him to the metro station. Vienna also has a really good metro, which is dope. But so you get to hang out with him for a little bit. Yeah. 
The thing I also liked about most European cities is, especially in Berlin, they have the main train station that connects all the big cities, then they have the metro underground, then they have the above ground trams, and then in some cities they even have buses too. It's just like, you can literally get anywhere. You do not need a car here. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, um, in Atlanta, good luck. Yeah, Atlanta's Marta like, is trash. Oh, you want to go to Centennial Olympic Park? Good. That's about it. It's about have all fun. you'll get. Go walk around. You want to go anywhere else? Have a five-minute walk or 50-minute walk, pretty much. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Um, Stupid. But, yeah, Vienna has really cool architecture. It's funny. They actually have a little amusement park. It's where the first Ferris wheel ever made. The Wiener was. Park? Uh, no. Wiener World? It's called, uh, oh, shoot. L- something with an L. I can't remember. But uh, it was really cool. I didn't go. But they had like some sweet, pretty sweet looking roller coasters. I didn't get to go. But uh, yeah, it was kind of expensive. Yeah. But yeah, I, that was one of the times when I did do the hop on, hop off bus. Because I was kind of sick. I didn't want to be walking around. And I was just like, eh, whatever. I can just sit on it and see the cool stuff. And it went to a good amount of the places I wanted to see anyway. Like the main thing was like the Hofburg Palace, which is really far away. It's crazy. It's like the Biltmore House in Asheville times 10. This place is just gigantic. I didn't get to go inside because you had to have tickets and reservation for like a month in advance, but it was still pretty cool. And then I didn't even really know I was going to go to Vienna until like a couple, like a week before I think I decided that I had to get home via, I was just like Budapest and then I have to figure out how I'm getting to Milan. So then I decided then from Vienna to fly to Munich Munich didn't really know that much. It was kind of like a last minute place. So I didn't really do that much research. I wasn't there for very long. It was just like take a train, get there at night. The hostel, I I was more sick that day too. I was not feeling as good when I got to Munich. And do you think you were sick because of actual food poisoning? I don't know. Or do know, you think it was just like you were exhausted and traveling too much? No, it was just like I don't know, it was a mixture because I had like a cold, I had like the chills really bad, but then I also had like stomach issues and it was like anytime, basically anytime I ate anything, my, it was just not a good idea. So that was maybe Mm. think it was food poisoning because that's kind of how that went. But, uh, I don't know. I think it was food poisoning because there was this burger that, um, you're just sitting on the coin. uh, That's why there was this burger that I ate in Prague. It was kind of raw, but I was like, everybody else is buying this. The line's like super long. Uh, but I think that was it because it was definitely raw in the middle. Uh, mm. I think that was it. But uh, anyway, luckily I just ended up like buying a ton of ramen at this one store. And then at every hostel I could just make ramen. And that was like really easy to eat. And it wasn't that harsh on How'd my How did you stomach. heat up the water? Pretty much everyone has like microwaves or one of those little tea uh, uh, things that heat up. Or a coffee maker. Like they all yeah. have some, some way to get hot water. So that was nice. Like I think... I think in Budapest, I bought like 15 cups of ramen. And unfortunately, that's what I ate like at all those cities. And there's so much good food that I didn't get to try because anytime I would eat anything, it would just, and the bathrooms aren't as available there. So it was kind of like eating became like a problem because I needed to eat, but I couldn't eat because there's no bathroom. And yeah, it kind of mm. sucked, kind of ruined a couple of the cities. Yeah, that is a weird thing about Europe is uh, a lot of times it's very hard to locate a public bathroom that yeah. you can use. Like I feel in America, you can easily use the restroom wherever. Yeah, every public place has to have one. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's a law, like any restaurant. And the, but I mean, some restaurants are like, you have to be a paying customer to use it, but. Pretty much the only place you could find one that's like public and nice is in McDonald's. That's what I would always yep, just look for. I would always look for McDonald's too. Or like Burger King or something. Mm-hmm fast food place um or starbucks sometimes the starbucks would make you pay though really um, actually no most of the mcdonald's especially the ones in vienna i learned that all the bathrooms have a core a code lock and the way to get that code is it's on the bottom of your seat but they're always so packed that i just asked someone on the table i just said oh, i threw out my receipt can i get yours and they're like yeah sure the code's right here and you just go in the bathroom was the code always the same i don't know it's different mcdonald's mm. Um, but 
Yes, in Vienna and Munich. I have a question. Does everyone in these countries like pretty much speak English in a lot of the ones you went to? Or was there anywhere where those was, was significantly harder? Uh Yeah, honestly, I feel like the hardest place was Italy. Hmm. I feel like they spoke the least amount of English. Probably. Because there's because the less people that know their language, the more they have to know other people's. In Italy, like everybody pretty much spoke Italian. I felt the dumbest there. Could have also just been because it was like first country I was at and I was like, you know, feeling like a dumb American. Well, also, it's it's true. Like, a lot of shows and stuff in Italy, in, in other countries, they will dub them. So, it will be, or it will it will just be subtitles. So, it'll still be in English, but then they'll have, like, the Spanish or, you know, like, German subtitles. In Italy, almost all the shows are dubbed. So, they actually are redone with Italian voices and stuff, a lot of huh. them. It seems like, yeah. At least. I just felt like even when I was like came fairly back, odd like parents from, even was like I, dubbed over and stuff. That's funny. It's hilarious. Even when I had to come back to catch my flight to Milan, I felt like I was like, wow, like this place is a lot harder to get around not knowing English. I've heard France is really bad. Like people in yeah France, because mainly just because I don't think they like people in like England, and since we also speak English, they just like don't associate. They just don't like. Yeah, I mean, you're going to hear a lot of different things, but I didn't have that much of a problem in Paris, but I, I, I agree. I felt a lot more intimidated there. Yeah, because I know... Speaking English. I didn't... I, did, I was always, like, very hesitant to speak English. Yeah, the, the other thing, too, is that those countries, like, from Czech Republic and Poland, I think in... Yeah, in Prague, they speak Czech, which is, like... <laughs> Most people, I feel like, wouldn't even know that. And they're all super similar. So, it's all just kind of, like, jumbled. Like, some people literally speak, like, a mix of all three. But they just know what you're t- saying because the words sound so similar. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, yeah, that's kind of interesting. But... So, then after you... In Vienna, too, they speak uh, German. But it's weird because like a different accent. Like the people from yeah. Berlin are like, ah, he's 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 uh, from Vienna or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a Viennese uh, accent. So a Wiener accent. Yeah. So um, so you went to Munich and then you went back to Milan and then you went back home, right? Mm-hmm. So how long was the trip? Uh, three and a half weeks. Yeah, it was about like two nights, three. Like three, two and a half days in each place. Kind of. I don't really know. I'd have to write it down on paper to figure it out. Yeah. I don't even remember the days I left and came back. That's awesome. So, for anybody who is inspired or whatever, obviously, because this was an amazing trip for you, right? Yeah, the surprising thing was absolutely nothing went wrong. And, I mean, I was kind of expecting, like, okay. You got sick. Second time, yeah. But even still, like, I was totally fine. There wasn't really, like, any problems with, like, I was expecting to be, like, stranded somewhere, take the wrong something, like, mess something up. I didn't mess anything up. That's what I mean by that. Like, I got sick, but that's not something I did. Like, yeah, you know, I was, like, something... But honestly, getting lost is sometimes kind of part of the fun. Yeah, very true. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was awesome. Like, you know, I just expected something to happen. I'd miss a train or miss... Nice thing, too, about having the Euro Pass, you can just hop on any train. So it's like, eh, I feel like crap, or eh, I want to go see something in Vienna. So I can I... just leave two hours later and then get this thing. Like, it's not a concrete. It's so flexible. It's great. So for people that don't know, we didn't really explain the Euro Pass super well. So basically, it's like a pass there's, you buy. There's a, so many different variations. It would take forever to explain. But there's... The basic ver there's like basic Euro pass that works in like one country. And there's another one that works in three countries. Then there's one that works in like all the countries excluding the UK and then in some countries you have to have a uh, reservation and then there's one country that doesn't work in I don't remember. But then out of those three you also choose from another two options, the continuous or the flexi. The continuous is like 15 days, you can use as much as you want in the 15 days 15 day window. Then there's another one that's like the flexi, which is you have five travel days and it's like 
the day you use that one, it works only that day. You can take as many trains as you want in that one day, but it's only five days of travel. And then you can get that for like a lot of days. But I've found that if you're, if you're gonna do like 90 days there, your best bet's the 90 day continuous flex, continuous pass. It's not that much more. And like just have the freedom to hop on a train any day you want, any train you want, unlimited for 90 days. I think it's like, I mean, mine was, I want to say 300 euro. I mean, that one's only like 900 euro. Mine was five days of travel. You could get 90 for. Wow. Yeah. Like the longer you're there, the way cheaper the euro passes get. Like for me, it might have not even been that economical to buy, but I had a lot of ground to cover. So yeah, things easy. Yeah. Makes sense. So, um, so you, you would recommend the euro pass for people? If you're traveling in, I don't want to say like uh, Western Europe because it's not really Western, but like, yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you don't intend on spending a lot of time in Italy, France, or Spain. Mm. Yeah. Or the UK because it doesn't work there. Yeah, so if you're kind of trying to visit a bunch of all those little like smaller countries, it's good. Yeah. That makes sense. Basically like the EU countries. If people were going to cha- take a trip, if you were going to go back, where would you go again? Or where would you recommend people go for sure? Honestly, that loop I took, if you're trying to stay on a budget, is a lot of people take that route or they do the route I did and go backwards. How so much did you, do you think you makes, spent like in that part of the trip? Because obviously Tomorrowland trip, was more expensive. That whole trip... My whole trip was three thousand nine hundred dollars. That's including everything, even Tomorrowland. Yes. Wow. Actually, I think it was no, it was three thousand seven hundred. Sorry, I did. I was just looking at my book the other day. I recorded it, but the crazy thing is, from Berlin on, was only eight hundred dollars. So the first part of the trip, Tomorrowland, all that stuff was obviously way the more flight expensive. was. 460 and Tomorrowland was like uh I know with the flight in Tomorrowland that was like 1700 bucks. The Euro pass was like 400 US cuz I waited to buy it. If you're going to buy it, make sure you buy it online and have it shipped to your house because once you're over there it's like a pain to get it because it's only available to Americans. If you're a European, they sell the uh interrail pass and it's a lot cheaper, but um yeah, so it's a lot cheaper if you order it to your house. And they send um, it to your house in America? Yeah. Huh. That's the best way to do it. It's 30% more expensive if you buy it over there. I don't know why. Hmm. But basically the way it works, like the Flexi, they just like validate it every time. So it's valid like a whole year whenever you want to start activating it. Huh. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so, so it was about like 2000 for Tomorrowland and uh, the flights in the Euro Pass, so it is only like one thousand. I mean, not that much. I mean, when I say Berlin on, like all the cities after you left, my whole trip was only like eight hundred and fifty bucks. That's crazy. That includes all the hostels, all the food, and including a yeah. So that's pretty. That's like. I mean, 800 bucks, that's like literally 60 bucks a day. Two you, solid you weeks of travel. You could not even... Yeah, I mean, you could not even do that here in America. No way. Yeah. But... 60 bucks when people are like, well, I... Sp- blah, blah, blah. Well, you also think about your gas money, your food money, your rent money, your utilities, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, everything's like- so much cheaper over there. And there's all these little farmer's markets. So you can just go to the store, buy a little picnic, go to a public park and eat it. This is nice. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. Well, dude, let's. Um, I feel like that was. We, we kind of covered a lot of stuff with your trip and everything. Um, is there anything that you would like want to add or anything like that? Um. Yeah, if you go to like, I would just recommend. Do research from I I used a website I think called like the Hungry Part or no no no, it was uh. Uh, backpack I can't remember what it's called I think it's like a it's basically just like a blog about backpack I would say like your best bet 
don't bring a lot of stuff if you're gonna do like a solo trip. Bring a luggage size that can bring that you can do carry on. Because you don't want to be lugging around all that crap. Like you check out of your hostel and then you, you gotta get You think you want everything, but the less you items don't. you have the better. I brought two pairs of shoes. Or yeah, two pairs of shoes. I totally wish I would have just brought one. Like literally the ones on my feet would have been so much better. Stan Smiths or Ultra Boot or Pure Boosts? Stan Smiths, but they gotta be broken in. So good mm. blisters if they're not. Ah. It's always kind of like, uh, yeah, it'd be nice Remember to have Remember how them. you weren't even going to bring those? And then I was like, dude, you definitely need to bring your Stan Smiths. Yeah. If you're going to Europe, you can wear some Stan Smiths. You'll blend in. Yeah, honestly, I would say bring like those and then maybe a pair of like flip-flops. Mm. Flip-flops are clutch because when you're at the hostel. Showers. Yeah. And you can wear those out like if you really wanted to, but you don't really yeah, want to. Yeah, you don't really want to look and, like a dork. Yeah. You don't need to bring a ton of... You just do laundry there. Like, it's not... Yeah, it's not that big of a deal. And you bring a microfiber towel. Yeah, microfiber towel is key. Uh, but yeah, I just had like a ba- uh, like a hybrid of a backpacking backpack and a... Luggage bag. Luggage bag. So it had like a hip belt, but I think it weighed like uh, 20 pounds at the end of my trip. So you did not need that much. It's not... So don't bring your hair dryer. Yeah. Don't bring your extra five pairs of shoes. Don't bring 90 pairs of underwear and socks. You don't need it. Yeah. If you just do laundry like every five days, you're straight, you know? Yeah. Um, And the good thing about pants, you can wear pants over and over and over without washing them. Yeah. Because if just changing like the underwear and showering, you know, like. Yeah. Pants don't really you get don't nearly as dirty as, yeah, you don't yeah. really sweat as much, like, your shirts get gross, but, like, pants and jeans and stuff, like, you're fine. Yeah. Like, I think I washed my jeans one time while I was over there, so. Nice. Uh, Very cool stuff. Well, anything else that, you wanna, that you'd want to add or anything like that? Uh, not that I can think of. Cool. What about you? Not really. I'm trying to think, you know, just... If you're if you're on the fence about like traveling or whatever, solo traveling especially is one of the most rewarding things you can do simply because you're forced to make all of your own decisions. You learn a lot about yourself. You yeah. learn a lot about how you like to be and how you like to interact and it's like a giant reset button for everything and you get tons of new perspectives on life. You don't have to act any certain way. You're just by yourself. And solo traveling is super empowering. Also, if you're a girl listening to this or a woman or a female, uh, don't be afraid to solo travel either. Uh, If you want to learn more about female solo traveling, I would go listen to a podcast called The Laptop Lifestyle with Alexis Tyke Miller. That podcast is really awesome. Um, I just started recently listening to it, and it's all about how to uh, turn your side hustle into a lucrative business so you can live the laptop lifestyle run your business on your laptop and she does a lot of solo traveling um she does lots of content creation yeah it's a pretty um good podcast hopefully um i'm going to be connecting with her pretty soon i was talking with her on instagram the other day um got connected with her um through a mutual friend but i would definitely go listen to that podcast the laptop lifestyle with alexis tyke miller Um, if you're a female wondering about uh, solo travel as well because it's not as dangerous as you think and it's very empowering and it's very awesome. Very cool learning experience. And if uh, anybody listening wants to take a trip this summer and you don't, you want to go by yourself or something and you want to go like the first place, Mm. let's do it. Let's do it. Hit me up. Dude, yeah, I I really want to do a massive trip this summer. That's the best when you just like, someone's like, oh yeah, I'm going to be in this city and you just meet up with them and you're on the other side of the world. Like, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you don't even know who I am. Just hit me up. Like, I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Go to a park. We'll have a picnic. Yes, 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 indeed. Uh, Also come to Tomorrowland with us. I'm trying to do both weekends. I want to do it. I, I I think I owe it to myself. You know? Yeah. It's just legendary. Got to do while you're young. Got to go all out. Also, I want to try to go to Goodwood Festival of Speed. It's like this giant car thing in uh, 
in England, in the UK. It's the weekend before weekend one of Tomorrowland. So I'm thinking try to go to Goodwood, Tomorrowland, Tomorrowland. Hmm. Maybe Yacht Week. That'd be sweet. Like a month. It'd be lit. Maybe more. And then maybe I want to go Australia. for like the whole 90 days. Yeah. That'd be sweet. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. It'll be legendary. Follow along. Follow Matthew on Instagram. What's your Instagram? At Matt Deitch. At M underscore Deitch. M underscore Deitch. You heard it here first, folks. Um, anything else, Matthew? Nah. All right. Stay drinking that wiener water. Stay drinking that wiener water. Stay thirsty. Stay hydrated. And uh, we out. All right. And there you have it. Episode 60. What is this? Episode 67. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I want to thank Matthew again for being on the show sharing his adventures with us. If you want to follow him on Instagram or Snapchat, I'll make sure to link those up in the show notes. His birthday is next week on January 19th. I guess, wait, today's Sunday. So, yeah, next week. He's turning 20 years old. So make sure you go shoot him a message. Wish him a happy birthday. (laughs) Little bro's growing up. (laughs) Turning 20. (laughs) Um, all right. Well, if you enjoyed this episode, I have a pretty strong feeling that you would also really enjoy episode 51. If you've made the mistake of not going back and listening to episode 51, um, that was the episode that Matthew was first on. Uh, he shared his personal story, how he ended up spending 15 months without a smartphone or communication with the outside world. Um, very powerful story. Um, and he's very open and transparent on that episode. And I really appreciate that. It's the only way that we can truly learn from each other, you know? Um, I think you would also probably going back five episodes to listen to episode 62 with episode with Darius Gilchrist. Um, I met Darius a few years ago. We were working at a gym together and, um, if he wouldn't have told me, I would have never known that he had been recently diagnosed with ALS and the doctors had given him two to five years to live. And since meeting Darius, he's become a huge world traveler. He's conquering his bucket list one item at a time. And instead of just letting the disease slowly take over his body, um, you know, he got his ass in gear and he decided that he needed to live the best life he could. And he's traveled way more than the average person ever will in their lifetime. Um, you know, gone to tons of music festivals, gone skydiving, moved out to California to pursue his career, all kinds of stuff. And, um, We talked about how he came out of the closet in high school, his experience in college, how he got diagnosed, and of course, all of his adventures all around the planet. And uh, he has an awesome, super powerful story. You should definitely go check it out. Again, that was episode 62 with Darius Gilchrist. Um, Last time I told you that this episode was going to be with Laura Esposito, but that episode fell through. It's postponed. We're doing it later this week. So episode 68 is coming up next with Alec Robertson. He's a photographer and videographer who is crazy talented. He shoots a lot of cityscapes, concerts, especially electronic music. And he shot for tons of really, really big artists. I'm sure we're going to talk about all kinds of insider information. That episode is going to be recorded later on today. I'm very excited about it. Um, So stay tuned. That episode will be coming very, very soon. I am going to Mexico next week. Crazy, right? I'm excited. Um, So I'm planning on recording a whole bunch of episodes this week so that I can continue posting while I'm gone. Should be a great time. Very stoked going with my family. Hopefully get to relax. Maybe tan my sour cream skin. Um, (laughs) But if you enjoyed this episode, the best way to go support it is number one, to share it with your friends, and number two, to go to iTunes and rate it five stars. Um, There's like 52 or 53 ratings in there right now. I would really appreciate a couple more. really means a lot to me. This is episode 67. We don't even have 67 ratings in there. So it would really mean a lot if you took a minute to go rate it five stars. It would be very helpful, and it helps me get this podcast out to more people. Um, if you want to follow me on social media, you can go to my website, andrewdeitch.com. You can find the links to all of my handles and accounts. Um, but that's pretty much it. Thanks for listening, everybody. 
and I will catch you guys in the next one. Yeah, log on to andrewdeichpodcast.com slash smells to buy the scratch and sniffs.